a wait staff that's second to none, intimate seating for two, or banquet facilities for 400, and live entertainment in the exciting Ozone Lounge. From appetizers to entrees and so much more, Anthony's Steakhouse at 72nd and F is Omaha's finest and friendliest restaurant. Welcome back to Quest Center Omaha, game one of the three-game championship series for the College Basketball Invitational. Time for me to talk with the head coach, Greg McDermott. It's Coach's Keys to the Game, brought to you by Kidwell, your leaders in technology solutions. Coach, we sit here at Quest Center Omaha before the crowd shows up tonight. Ticket sales have been brisk, as you might expect. You should have a pretty good crowd on hand tonight. I think so, and I think it'll be an enthusiastic crowd. And, uh, you know, tonight they know this is it. This is the last time this team will play, play at home this season. And uh, I, hope we're, I hope they're into it from the opening tip, and I hope, I hope we give them reason to be into it from the opening tip. Well, it couldn't have been scripted any better if you're the college basketball invitational guys, the Gazelle group who put this thing together. They get the two teams in the finals that are going to generate the most buzz, obviously. Dana Allman coming back to Omaha. A lot's been made of it. Greg, has too much been made of that? You know, it's natural for the media to do that, and uh, I've been part of it twice when I went back to Northern Iowa the first time when I was at Iowa State, and when I went back to Iowa State to play Iowa State this year in Des Moines when I came here to Creighton. So, you know, I, I understand why the media thinks it's a big story, and, and uh, you know, I've been on Coach Altman's side of it the other two times, and, and I know it's, uh, you know, it's not near as difficult on me as it is on him because uh, there's a lot of motions that go into it, and uh, once the game starts, everything will be fine. But, uh, you know, I, th I think our fans will come out in full force tonight to support our team, and I think they'll, uh, they'll give, give Coach Altman the respect he deserves. Well, you've been there. You've done that. How much did it affect you, Greg? I mean, as far as coaching the games, getting ready for them, did it distract you at all? No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't impact your your preparation whatsoever. What it what it impacts is the amount of sleep you get a couple nights before the game because you just uh, like I said, there's a lot of emotional ties you have to a place where, in my case, five years in Northern Iowa, four years at Iowa State. I can't only imagine being 16 years somewhere and coming back for the first time. So, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's it's difficult from an emotional standpoint, but uh, it, it did not impact my preparation. It didn't impact the game itself. It's just. Uh, it's something for the media to talk about leading up to the game, and, and I understand why they do that. It is a big story, and, uh, you know, nobody probably would ever imagine Coach Altman would be back in the Quest Center ever, let alone this quick. All right, well, speaking of preparation, both these teams, you and Coach Altman's team, have had plenty of time to prepare for one another. You've watched a lot of tape. Oregon comes in on a roll, 5-1 and one in their last six games. What are they doing well? Well, you know, they do what they do well. They they get into their full court pressure, uh, both on the both on the ball at the full court level and at the three quarter court level to try to dictate tempo. Uh, they're, they've they've improved with their matchup zone as the season has gone on. And you know, the reality of it is, if we knock down some shots, we're gonna we're gonna give that zone some trouble, and we'll be able to establish an inside game. But uh, you know, EJ Singler's playing great basketball. Had a great Pac-10 tournament. Uh, played outstanding against UCLA and the win against UCLA uh, just a couple weeks ago. And and Catron's a load inside. Uh, he's a little bit undersized, but he's strong and powerful. Gives a second and third effort on the offensive glass. And, and their guards are, are certainly serviceable. When they've shot it well, when their wings have shot it well, Oregon's been a tough team to beat. Not unlike us. Uh, when our wings have played well and given us an extra boost offensively, uh, you know, we've been able to win some pretty big games. How are these two teams similar? Well, I think that's I think that's where they're similar. I think the point guard play, uh, although Antoine, from a number standpoint, has probably done more than Armstead, Armstead and, Lo and Lloyd. Uh, but inside, you know, Catron does a lot of the things Gregory and Kenny do on the block. And when you combine Kenny and Gregory, Gregory's ability to score around the basket, Kenny being able to step away. That's really what Catron does. And uh, and Singler is a lot like Doug. He'll shoot the three-point shot. He'll slash. He'll score on the block some. Uh, he's a tough matchup uh, for, 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 for big guys out on that perimeter. So uh, there's a lot of similarities, and, and, you know, our wings haven't been the most productive on the year as you look at the, uh, the entirety of the statistics from the season, uh, but they've had good games at times, and I think that's when our team's been good, and that's when Oregon's actually had some big wins. What are the biggest contrasts in these two teams? I know they're obvious, but talk to them about the fans, or talk for the fans about it. Well, we're going to play mostly man-to-man -man defense. They're going to play mostly matchup zone, and uh, I think that's the biggest difference. They're gonna they're gonna press some. Uh, we're not gonna press much. Uh, you know, we may change things up in the quarter court with how we play our man-to-man -man defense, uh, but it's gonna be what we've worked on all year and, and and to try to stop them in that regard. 
All right, when you take a look at the matchups, front line play would seem to be a big key tonight with Gregory, with Kenny, with Doug, with guys coming in off the bench like a Wayne Runnels. How do you like the matchup down there? Well, I think we certainly have an advantage. I think we have a little more depth down there, we, and we certainly have a little more size with Gregory and Kenny at 6'9 uh, against their 6'6 front line. So we have to try to get it in there. My guess is that'll be something that uh, uh, Coach Altman isn't going to want to have happen. If it does go in there, I, I would guess they're going to do something to really try to get it out of there and, and run at Gregory, run at Kenny and Doug when they catch it inside. So. Uh, we've got to use our depth to our advantage. We have to take a look at three-point shots in transition, but we can't forget about those big guys down low. This is such a chess match, Greg, between two teams that know each other so well. Can you overthink a game like this? Uh, you know, I don't think so, and, and simply because you know, I've got Coach DeVries on my staff. Len Gordy worked for, for Coach Altman for a number of years, so they know the, ins the offense inside and out. They know what, uh, they know what you, the, you, they know what defense the offense is going to be successful against and they know what gives the offense problems and so we haven't had to spend a time a lot of time prepping three or four different things because they're well aware of hey, if we try that it's not going to work coach Altman's going to chew that up uh, so we've been able to zero in on what we wanted to do and really work on it for three days now how we, how it carries over onto the playing floor is yet to be seen do you expect your team and the players that were recruited by Dana Altman to have any kind of jitters at all early on in this game? I think the jitters will come from it's we're in the championship series now. We're going to have a great crowd tonight that's going to have a, I think there's going to be a, a pretty good energy in here to start the game uh, during starting, starting lineup. So once we get past that and the ball goes up in the air, I think we'll be fine. For Blue Jay fans coming in, Greg, some of the keys to look for early on in this basketball game, jitters or not? Well, you know, I, I've talked to the team a lot about we can't have what I call pick six turnovers. Turnovers that lead to a breakout layup or dunk on, on Oregon's part. If, if, if they are going to, if we're going to turn the basketball over, it needs to be a five second call, a 10 second call, where we hand the ball to the referee and we go set up our defense. We can't allow them to fuel their defense with easy turnovers and baskets because of our mistakes. I think that's really critical. And then uh, on the offensive end, we've got to pound that baby inside. I think post touches will be really critical tonight. And if we can get it in there and make some things happen, um, good things will happen for the Blue Jays. They're not a great rebounding team. Boards? Yeah, I mean, obviously in the zone, there's some holes to offensive rebound, but they are a pretty good transition offensive team. So depending on who's in the game, when we have the small line up there with, in there with Josh and Caleb or Jahans, uh, we're going to commit three to defensive transition. When Daryl's in the game um, at the wing, we'll let Daryl go to the offensive board and, and uh, you know, let him try to go create some second opportunities for us. You like to hang your hat on defense, Coach. One of the best points you made in the pregame was they can't set up the press if they don't make any shots. Yeah, you know, we, we have to do a solid job defensively and try to keep it from getting into that press. And uh, that, that starts with our intensity and our execution on the defensive end of the floor. And, uh, if they're scoring a lot of baskets, it's not good for us in, on a lot of fronts. Well, your team is playing as well as it's played all year. Why? Well, I, I think we're moving the ball better, uh, T. Scott. And I, I think the, because we're moving the ball, we're sharing the ball, we're, we're making a, we're turning up a good shot to get a great shot. And uh, we've been after that all year, and it seems to have clicked a little bit more recently. And, uh, you know, that's what I wanted to, wanted to see out of this team. And I think they have a lot of confidence, not only in themselves, but in each other right now. And uh, when you have a team like that, you, you're seeing what's happening in the NCAA tournament with a team like Butler and VCU. Um, even though when you look at it on paper, it maybe looks like a mismatch, confidence is a funny thing. And it, it, it can raise a, a group of guys to, to an unbelievable heights, and hopefully we can, uh, we can ride this wave a little longer. Good luck tonight. Thanks, T. Scott. Head coach Greg McDermott of the Creighton Blue Jays. His Jays taking on the Oregon Ducks here in the finals of the CBI, the College Basketball Invitational. I'm going to take a break. When I come back, Nick Bond, I will have starting lineups, opening tip. It's right around the corner. This is the American National Bank pregame show on AM 590 Omaha's ESPN Radio. U.S. Cellular introduces the industry's first rewards program with points that you earn for doing things you'd normally do anyway, like paying your bill or referring a friend. And you can use those points toward faster phone upgrades, overage forgiveness, and more great stuff. Reward points that don't make you fly 500 miles an hour in a pressurized metal tube at 30,000 feet? Huh. Imagine that. The Belief Project from U.S. Cellular. Join today or visit uscellular.com slash project for more information. 
Welcome back to Quest Center Home, everybody. Time now for your starting lineups brought to you by DJ's Dugout. Dig in at the dugout. We'll start with the visitors. They are the Oregon Ducks coming in at 19 and 17 on the season. Their head coach, Dana Altman, in his first season. At the guards, Jonathan Lloyd, a freshman, number 10, 5'8", out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Lloyd averaging four points and two rebounds a game. The other guard, Garrett Sim, number three, a 6'1 junior out of Portland, Oregon. Sim averaging eight points and two rebounds a game. E.J. Singler, a forward, number 25, a 6'8 sophomore, 6'6 sophomore out of Bedford, Oregon. Singler averaging 11 points and five rebounds a game. He is joined by Tyrone Nerritt, a 6'8 junior out of Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Number 31, Nerritt averaging five points and four rebounds a game. And the stud for the Ducks, Jovan Catron, number 34, a 6'6 senior out of Phoenix, averaging 15 points and seven rebounds a game. Now the starting lineup for your Creighton Blue Jays. Jays come in at 22 and 14 on the season. Their coach, Greg McDermott, in his first season at the helm for Creighton. At the point, the Iron Man, number 30, the six foot junior out of Bellevue, Nebraska, Antoine Young, averaging 13 points, two rebounds, and nearly five assists per game. He's joined in the backcourt by the fabulous freshman from Canada. Number 12, 6'1", Jahans Madaga, averaging five points and two rebounds a game. The third guard, the 6'5", senior out of Pella, Iowa. Number 15, Caleb Korver, averaging four points and three rebounds a game. The forward is the all-conference freshman out of Ames, Iowa. Number three, six, seven, Doug McDermott, leading the team in scoring and rebounding at 15 points and better than seven rebounds a game and down low, double zero. Gregory Echenique, 6'9", 270-pound sophomore out of Venezuela, Echenique averaging 10 points and five rebounds a game. Those are your starting lineups brought to you by DJ's Dugout. Remember to dig in at the dugout. Nick Bob. The Creighton fans rose to their feet to welcome the Blue Jays onto the floor and then remained on their feet and waited for Dana Altman to come out of the tunnel and onto the floor where he received a standing ovation. It gave me goosebumps. Yeah, it was a really cool moment. And then they announced Coach Altman as the head coach of Oregon, obviously, and there was another big round of applause. It's really cool to see a fan base be able to, you know, put everything else aside and just appreciate the fact that the guy gave everything he had for 16 years and they're the reason that Creighton plays in this building and Creighton, and there are a lot of good memories. So it was a really cool moment to see the fans give Coach Altman what he deserves. And he is the reason the bar has been set sure. so high sure. for Creighton University. Now, once the tip-off goes off, these fans in blue are gonna give the Ducks a world of hurt here. And really, I think because it's Dana Altman, they, this may be the loudest crowd of the year for Creighton, the, and it's a big crowd. Everybody's here right now. I mean, the mayor's here. You, you see everybody. It's What's a Doc who's Sadler who. doing yeah, here? Doc Sadler's here. I mean, it, it, every, it's a who's who right now, and it's a great atmosphere. This is going to be a fun game. The Blue Jays in their home whites. The Ducks in their traveling blacks with that neon yellow. Of course, game two, regardless of the outcome tonight, will take place Wednesday night in Eugene, Oregon. Officials tonight, Jerry Pollard, Eric Curry, and Winston Stiff. And we are just about set to get underway. Ball's in the air, and it is controlled by the Ducks into the hands of Sim. And he gives it up to Lloyd. Make that Malcolm Armstead, excuse me, and Armstead up into front court. Right away, they go to Singler. Singler on the move. Down left side, they go baseline. On the floor with the ball, Catron working against Echenique. Jovan Catron, kick out. Three on the way, far wing, weak, no, it is good. It went off the iron straight up and down and through the net. And Oregon's on the board first with a three ball. Bad matchup with Nared on Caleb Corver, and they have to help, but he kicks it out, and Armstead knocks down the three. Giants Banaga hounded up here on the wing by Malcolm Armstead, now gives it up Antoine Young. Again, they denied Young the ball. Now they go Corver, right side block is McDermott, they double him. So Doug comes out, around the arc they go. Managa to Corver. Right wing, baseline. McDermott, three ball, nothing but nylon. Dougie boy, hand in his face, answers. Beautiful job against this matchup zone. Someone's got to be able to step out and stretch the defense. McDermott does that. Armstead to Singler, top of the key. Back and over to Sim, working between the circles. McDermott on him, takes him into the paint, kicks back outside. Catron, top of the key, working on Echenique, down inside, gives it up. Pump fake by Sim, back outside. 
on the wing. There's a three on the way up the iron. No good. Tough rebound down inside and taken down by Tyrone Nayred. Echenique is going to have to go get it. And there's a three ball. Nothing but nylon. E.J. Singler, 39% shooter from downtown. Yeah, offensive rebound. Second chance point. Singler has been playing outstanding lately. Knocks it down. And McDermott is all alone. And Echenique did not see him. They broke the press. And McDermott was all by himself in the paint. But they missed him. Antoine Young between the circles, high wing right side, McDermott down to the corner. Managa around the arc, they go McDermott to Young. Now up on the elbow to Corver. Inside again, entry pass, McDermott shot up and a foul. Inside, Catron picks up his first personal first team foul on the Ducks. Well, against this matchup zone, you gotta have a lot of ball and player movement. You gotta move around and shift the zone. You can't just stand in a spot. Jays did a lot of moving there and ended up freeing up McDermott to go one-on-one -on -one in the post to Catron had to come over and foul. McDermott, Doug McDermott, a 75% free throw shooter on the season, and Doug knocks it down. He's responsible for all four points so far for the Blue Jays. No surprise there. McDermott back at the line. Two more, another, excuse me, another free throw coming. Doug knocks them both down. Ice water in his veins, that freshman. He's gotten off to good starts, and you know, obviously tonight's no exception. Up the floor comes Malcolm Armstead, the point guard, averaging four assists per game for the Ducks. Man-to-man -man defense for the Blue Jays. Now Sim on the elbow, hands off Catron. Sim working against Managa. Looking inside Catron, he's got Echenique one-on-one, -on -one, left side of the paint. Down inside Nerad, back outside Singler, working the ball down inside against McDermott. Spins around, shot up, is no good. Rebound Echenique, outlet Antoine Young on the run. Center of the floor, Jays down 6-5, just underway. Young, shake and bacon, free throw line, jumper is good. Antoine Young. That's where he, they want to see Antoine Young push it. See what he's got? Nice left to right crossover, stop and pop. Antoine Young on the board now. Armstead to Nabred. Over to Catron, right side. Driving inside on Echenique. Almost lost it. Did lose it. It's still got it. Catron up and into Echenique. Off the glass, no good. Rebound, Armstead, and he's good. Make it near Ed. That's two offensive rebounds for five points for Oregon. 8-7 Ducks. McDermott out, Managa, three on the way, nothing but nylon. Shahim's Managa continues his hot shooting as well. Got to make him pay for pressing, T. Scott. Down inside, ball tipped away from behind by Caleb Corver as Armstead came down inside. Jay's up 10-8 here, three minutes gone in the first half. Pick and choose your spots when you break the press and get behind it to attack and to pull it out. And there twice you've seen Antoine Young get a shot. Now Giants Managa knocks down a three as the Jays take the lead 10 to eight. Te Teandre Williams checks in for Dana Altman as well as J.R. Strobridge, the former Husker, for the Ducks now. And the Ducks with the ball. Working at the top of the key. Now left wing Strobridge, he'll shoot threes on you. Nared working the basketball one-on-one. -on -one. There's a pull away jumper is good. Tyrone Nared from 18 feet, knocks down, and we're tied at 10 apiece. Obviously was committed and recruited to Creighton. Tyron Nared getting it going. Caleb Corver looking inside, hounded by Armstead. Got to give it up. Right wing, Antoine Young. Driving inside, ball is stripped. Turnover. Three on two. Singler over to Strobridge. Pulls up. No. Down inside to Singler. It is saved in there by Armstead along the baseline. Back outside they go. Nared. Singler. Three on the way. Weak, no good. Rebound at Janike. So you want to push it a little bit, see what you can get. Antoine Young up in the front court to Caleb Corver. Corver working the ball to the center of the floor, right wing. Jahans Managa, tied at 10 apiece. Four minutes gone. Right elbow, Antoine Young looking inside to Echenique, battling down inside. Skips the ball over to Managa. Three on the way, another but nylon. Managa again making Oregon pay for their defense. Again, the matchup zone can get out of whack and it can lose its integrity quickly. And Managa frees himself up and knocks down his second three. Singler gives it up to Nayrad, back over to Singler, top of the key. Corver on him. Singler at 6'6, driving inside on Caleb Corver, throws it off the backboard side of it, and they save it. Back over Strobridge, quick three on the way, another but nylon, JR Strobridge. Boy, that's better than lucky than good right there. He's a streaky shooter, and he's averaging 9.4 points per game, but can really heat up. 13 apiece now, 15 16 remaining. In this first half, Managa finds Antoine Young at the free throw line. Left wing, Corver. He's going to try a three. Nothing but nylon. Nice to see Corver get off the schneid here in the CBI. Four threes now for the Jays. Strobridge with the basketball, top of the key. Working over right side, Nared. Working on Echenique, pulling him out. There's a three on the way, top of the key. Rims out, no good. Rebound, Corver. 
Caleb Corver just one for four coming in in the CBI. Knocked that one down. Antoine Young. Jays up 16-13. There's another three. Managa. Giants. Managa, the freshman, is feeling it right now. Three threes for the Canadian Red Bull. Just pushing it in the secondary break situation, T. Scott. And no one's matched up. And Antoine Young's just picking them apart. Nared over right side to Tiandre Williams working the ball of a near side wing. Williams shadowed top of the key. Nared three on the way off the iron, no good. Block out by Caleb Corver. What a great block out on Singler. Outstanding. 1913 Jays. Managa hands off McDermott. Strobridge on him. Over to Managa again on the wing. Down inside they go Echenique. He is double teamed. Baseline three on the way. That one's off the iron, no good. First miss for the Jays, up 19-13. Here comes Armstead to Strobridge. Quick trigger three, no good. Echenique rebound. Up Antoine Young, ducks one and done. Young, right side, near side in the front court, sets up on the right wing through the Echenique screen. Down inside, Antoine Young finds Echenique, secures the ball, is fouled, and one. Gregory Echenique fumbled the ball, got it back, went up, and was fouled. Played through it, made it. He's going along when we come back. Time out of the floor, 13-44, remaining first half. Jays up 21-13. Gregory Echenique going to the line to fight and finish a three-point play when we come back on AM 590. DJ's dugout salutes all the loyal Blue Jay fans, including the fans in the birdcage, in the perch, in the cheap seats, and in the nest. There's a whole new attitude with Creighton basketball this year, and there's a whole new DJ's dugout, now open at 10th and Capitol. So catch all the available hard-to-find Creighton TV and webcast away games at DJ's dugout. And stop by the newest DJ's dugout and Blazing Piano Sports Bar, now open at 10th and Capitol. And go Blue Jays! <laughs> Extraordinary cuisine. Exceptional service. That's what you get when you call the catering specialist at a catered affair. From spectacular box lunches to beautifully presented buffets, a catered affair will create an unforgettable event that you can be proud of. Whether you're entertaining a dinner party for 12 or planning a corporate event for 300, a catered affair is the answer. Call 614-5200. That's 614-5200. Extraordinary cuisine. Exceptional service. That's what you get with a catered affair. Choosing the right business partner is critical for success. That's why Creighton University chose Shepherd's Business Interiors for office furnishings, space planning, furniture installation, and more on major projects like the Harper Center, Morrison Stadium, the new Ryan Athletic Center, and DJ Sokol Arena. Shepherd specializes in office environments, but they do a lot more than just sell furniture. Let them help you. Call a Shepherd's consultant today, 393-8888, or visit their showroom on South 72nd across from the Mart. Shepherd's Business Interiors. We take care of your furniture needs so you can take care of your business. Blue Jay Basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there for all your insurance needs. Call Jay Bergmeyer at 895-7500 and by Jerry Ryan Clothing and Sportswear, your Midtown headquarters for Blue Jay Apparel. And by Doctors Bimbo and Vince Petro, general family dentistry on the corner of 144th and West Dodge Road. Dial 397-4505. 13-44, remaining first half. Jays off to a fast start, up 21-13, thanks to 7 of 8 from the field, 5 of 6 from downtown. Meanwhile, Oregon, 8 points off of offensive rebounds already in the first 6 minutes or so. Gregory Echenique going to the line, trying to complete the old-fashioned 3-point play. Echenique stepping up to the free-throw line, 70% on the season. Well, Creighton's just gotten easy, easy looks, whether it's been at the rim, from the three-point line in transition and in the half court, they've gotten great looks. And it shows seven of eight from the field, just doing a great job offensively. And I don't know what it is about this CBI, T. Scott, but the Jays are knocking down shots like it's nothing. Josh Jones checking into the ball game for Greg McDermott and the Blue Jays. Of course, Jones, the sophomore out of Omaha Central. He's been having himself a pretty good CBI as well. And now at the scorer's table, Kenny Lawson Jr. is going to spell Gregory Echenique at the first dead ball. Echenique, three rebounds already for himself. And we are set now. Echenique to shoot one. Jays up 21-13. 13-44 remaining first half. Got to assume Coach Altman will maybe try and come out of this matchup zone as Echenique makes a free throw because Creighton's getting anything they want against it. Jays back off. Half-court man-to-man. Echenique out. Lawson seeing his first action against his former coach. Here comes Jonathan Lloyd to the ball game. To Strobridge. Back out Lloyd. He'll move to the right wing. Down low they go. Catron, top of the key, Sim. 
Baseline, Williams driving inside, intercepted, turnover. Managog intercepted that pass. Managa over to Antoine Young between the circles now. Jays up 22-13, back Managa, back Young, center of the floor. McDermott comes out beyond the arc. Managa driving and bounce pass intended for Lawson instead into the hands of the Ducks and then Strobridge lays it up and down. So they exchange turnovers, but Oregon comes out on top with a bucket. 22-15 Creighton. Second steal of the game and Coach Altman's electing to stay with the matchup zone. Josh Jones between the circles, high wing, right side, Lawson, nobody down low right now. Lawson gives it up, Managa. Long skip pass, Jones looking for instant offense, Josh Jones, nothing but nylon. Three ball. Yeah, they are playing so confident right now, T. Scott. Each and every J feels like they just need an inch to get off a jump shot and it's going down and Jones picks up where he left off against Central Florida, burying the three. 25-15, Creighton up. Lloyd with the basketball between the circles now on the elbow. Katron back down inside, back outside. Sim looking for Katron and going to be a foul called on a Blue Jay. They got to try and get Katron involved. Coach Altman obviously understands if great if Oregon wants to win, Katron's got to play well, and they're trying to get him a touch. Now there'll be a baseline out of bounds. Kitty Lawson Jr. called for that foul, and they're trying to battle Katron down inside, back outside. DeAndre Williams to Catron, left side of the paint, kick out, top of the key, three on the way, is good. That is Garrett Sim, a 34% three-point shooter, and it's 25-18 Creighton. Stems from getting Catron a touch. Got to be careful how much you dig off him. Maybe try and make him score a little bit before you really help. Managa working the basketball against this zone. Now Lawson working it, looking to reverse the ball. Instead finds Jones. Right wing Managa looking inside. Wayne Runnels on the floor now off the bench for the Blue Jays. He'll dribble out of the double team. And Lawson comes over, Kenny Lawson going in, lays it up and down. Lawson put the ball on the floor there and escaped a trap and laid it off the glass and good 27-18 Jays. With the basketball, J.R. Strobridge right wing to Sim. Top of the key, Sim on the move. Reverses the ball, Catron. Down inside, shot on the way, it's a three ball and it's good. It's raining threes, Jonathan Lloyd with the bucket. 27-21 Jays. 11-23 and counting, first half. Oregon, 5-9 from downtown, the Jays 6-7. Josh Jones trying to drive inside on Strobridge, got to pick it up, goes outside Managa. Sims out on him. Garrett Sim on Jahens Managa. Managa moves over to the left wing, drives down inside, and a little wrap around inside intended for Kenny Lawson Jr. and a foul inside gonna be called on Oregon. That'll be team foul number Four on the Ducks, time out of the floor. 11.04 remaining first half. Great enough, 27-21. It'll be Blue Jay basketball when we come back on AM 590. The one and only Blue Jay Bar and Grill is up and running under new ownership and is still boasting the same Creighton tradition. Located at 24th and Davenport, just south of the Creighton campus, the Blue Jay Bar and Grill is the number one place for Creighton Blue Jay fans and alumni before and after the game. Food and drink specials every night of the week and seven newly added flat screen TVs. Don't forget the free beer 40 minutes after the game. Come check us out. The Blue Jay Bar and Grill. Lawler's Custom Sportswear has everything you need. Lawler's has Omaha's best and biggest selection of Creighton sportswear. Lawler's has Blue Jay t-shirts, hoodies, hats, jackets, replica jerseys, flags, even Blue Jay foam fingers. Check out the two for special. Two Creighton t-shirts for just $30. And Lawler's has four locations to serve you. West Roads, Oakview, Shadow Lake, and the College Superstore at 84th and J. Lawler's Custom Sportswear, a proud supporter of Creighton Athletics. U.S. Cellular introduces the industry's first rewards program with points that you earn for doing things you'd normally do anyway, like paying your bill or referring a friend. And you can use those points toward faster phone upgrades, overage forgiveness, and more great stuff. It's like getting rewarded with a touchdown, a goal, or a three-pointer just for lacing up your shoes. The Belief Project from U.S. Cellular. Join today or visit uscellular.com slash project for more information. Blue Jay basketball is brought to you by the Dubliner Pub, your pre- and post-game destination for all Blue Jay home games. The Dubliner Pub, located at 12th and Harney, and by Dex, from sports bars to sports cars. Who knows where to find it? Dex knows. And by Anthony's Steakhouse and Lounge, Omaha's finest and friendliest restaurant. Creighton up 27-21, 11 4 remaining first half. These two teams come in shooting. 
34% for the Ducks from beyond the arc. Creighton at just 36%. Right now, Creighton shooting 85% from beyond the three-point line, and Oregon at 55%. Well, everybody but Wayne Runnels has scored that's played for Creighton. Eight assists on nine made baskets. Jay's doing a nice job offensively. Daryl Ashford in the ball game now. Ashford, of course, the 6'4 senior out of Houston, Texas. Antoine Young, high wing left side. Guarded over there by Lloyd. Down inside Jones, got to pick up his dribble, he finds Ashford. Ashford working against this Oregon zone. Lawson now beyond the arc between the circles. Ashford picks up his dribble again, got to do something with it. Finally finds Jones, 10 on the shot clock. Antoine Young with the ball. Strawbridge on him. Antoine shaking and baking. Goes left side. Young off the glass, no good. And tipped out of there by Wayne Runnels, kept alive into the hands of Ashford. Fresh 35. Runnels down inside, back outside Ashford. Jay-Z to take advantage of this second chance. Jones, wing, three on the way off the iron, no good. Rebounded by Catron. Here come the Ducks. On the run, Jonathan Lloyd down inside, back outside, Sim, wing, nothing but nylon. Oh, man, they called it before. Foul on Josh Jones. On the pass before guarding Lloyd. Lloyd was shot out of a cannon, pushing that ball down the floor, and Sim knocked down the three, but there's a foul before the three. So no three, 27-21, Creighton. Sim going down inside, back outside. Lloyd, three on the way. Rims off, no good. And double dribble on Daryl Ashford. Yeah, he got the rebound awkwardly with one hand. Not sure if the other hand came and got it. We'll take another look at the replay here. So wow. I got an angle on the HD net camera. That's close. I mean, he did kind of corral it, and it hit his other hand, and it bounced, and he grabbed it and dribbled it again. So Oregon catches a big break there after the miss as Lloyd inbounds. Back outside they go. Singler to Strobridge to Sim between the circles. Over to Singler, right wing, Strobridge trying to get him off. Now Catron, right side, working one-on-one -on, -one on Lawson. Takes him inside, got away with a big-time walk, no call. Catron scores, Blue Jays lead is four, 27-23. Runnels, right wing, down inside, they go Lawson. Double team him, Kitty going inside, hook shot, no good. Backside iron, no good. Singler with the rebound on the run, 6-6. Six, six. Up in the front court, Strobridge. Down inside, Catron denied by Lawson. And here come the starters for the Blue Jays. Echenique, Korver, McDermott, and Managa. Jays up 27-23, duck basketball here. As Jonathan Lloyd looks to inbound right side under the Oregon hoop. Lloyd looks to get it in. Looking for Catron, deep inbound to Strobridge. Three quarters of the way down the floor, and he'll come back up toward front court. Flips it over to Lloyd. Left wing, Sim. Korver on him. Sim driving inside all the way to the hole. Tries to lay it up. No good. McDermott rebound. Outlet Antoine Young near side in the front court. Antoine over to McDermott to Corver. Not a good pass. Inside they go Echenique. Gregory, quick move. Outside Corver. Looking to skip the ball. They go back to Echenique. Back out Corver. Looking to repost Echenique. Around the arc they go. Managa's got to try to reset and shoots an air ball. 8.58 remaining first half. Jay's up 27-23. And be careful with those threes. See Josh Jones take a quick one, and now Manigot takes a kick, quick one. I know they're six of nine, but you can't fall in love with the long-range jump shot. Oregon brings the ball up into front court. 8.49 and counting first half. Jay's up 27-23. Jonathan Lloyd working the dribble to the left wing. Catron on the elbow. Will rise up for a jumper. Hand in his face. Nothing but nylon. Jovan Catron. 27-25, Ducks now cutting into this Blue Jay lead. Creighton led by 10 about four minutes ago. Managa, high wing right side, looking at a duck zone to Corver. Reverse the ball, left wing, Antoine Young. Skip pass, Managa, bounce pass, right block, McDermott. Dribbles out of it, picks up his dribble, kicks out Managa. Over to Corver. Inside, Echenique spins, left shoulder up, down, and one. Gregory Echenique went to his left shoulder, then pivoted to his right shoulder. That was a big-time move right there. There's a nice job on the perimeter of swinging the ball around to free up Echenique in the block. That's a pretty good matchup with Catron and Echenique, two big-bodied fellas going at it. And Echenique gets the better of them there with a nice, strong move. You know, we talked about it last game, the purpose behind Echenique when he's on the block. It makes a huge difference. Echenique knocks down the free throw. Three-point play for Gregory, his second of the evening. Jay's back up 30-25. 8.09 and counting first half. Singler, far side to Sim, to Strobridge. Left wing, Catron. has got Echenique 19 feet from the hoop. 
Catron picks up his dribble. Got to kick it back out. Sim between the circles. Left side, Armstead. Armstead will work it up toward the three-point arc. Looking inside. Armstead, back out, Strobridge. Quick trigger three is good. J.R. Strobridge, second three of the night. 30-28, Jays with a two-point lead. 7.40 and counting, first half. He's a very, very streaky scorer. Echenique down in the paint, lost the ball. Got it back. Shot off the glass, he is good. Gregory Echenique, how he did that, I have no idea. Bent down to his ankles to retrieve the ball, then back up through the defense to drop it down off the glass. 32-28, Creighton. Singler down the right side. Now back outside the arc on the wing. Doug McDermott on him. Bounce pass, Catron. Echenique backs off him. Shaking and bacon, Jovan Catron along the sideline. Throws it out of bounds. Great defense by Gregory Echenique. Time out of the floor. 7.07 remaining first half. Creighton up, 32-28. It will be Blue Jay basketball when we come back on AM 590. Creighton Baseball has a new home. It's TD Ameritrade Park, Omaha. Be a part of the historic inaugural season this spring when the Blue Jays make the move to the new downtown stadium. It's the start of a new era for Creighton, the best offensive team in college baseball. Season tickets start at only $144 and include the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament played at TD Ameritrade Park. Get your season tickets now by calling 280-JAYS. That's 280-JAYS. Creighton Baseball at TD Ameritrade Park. First game is April 19th. Be a part of the historic inaugural season this spring. Creighton Athletics would like to thank the following Wheels Club sponsors for their support. Hatchley Ford, Beardmore Chevrolet, Gene Steffi Chrysler Jeep Dodge, Markle BMW Land Rover Jaguar Mini, O'Daniel Honda, Performance Toyota and Lexus of Omaha, Rusty Eck Ford, Omaha Mitsubishi and Infinity of Omaha, and Greg Young Chevrolet. You help keep the Blue Jays rolling. service in the Marriott tradition. That's what you'll find at the Omaha Downtown Courtyard by Marriott. This fully restored historic building offers its guests 181 spacious rooms, suites, and spas. An indoor pool, whirlpool, and exercise room with a breakfast buffet available daily. Call today and ask about the special Creighton weekend rate based on availability. The Omaha Downtown Courtyard by Marriott, 101 South 10th. Call 346-2200 today. Blue Jay Basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. For all your insurance needs, call John Bergmeier at 339-3555 and by American National Bank, where American dreams come true, and by Fernando's Cafe and Cantina, Sunorn-style Mexican food made fresh seven days a week. 7.07 remaining first half. Jays up 32-28 to over the Oregon Ducks. Game one of the three-game series that will mark the championship of the CBI. Both coaches know the importance of winning that game one, put the pressure on the opposition. The Jays will travel to Eugene, Oregon tomorrow, Wednesday night ball game in Eugene. And it will be Blue Jay basketball coming out of this timeout. Doug McDermott will inbound for the Jays after the turnover and great defense by Greg Riechnike on Jovan Catron. McDermott inbounds Managa. They're denying the basketball to Antoine Young, so Managa is going to try to work it up himself against Sim. And Sim loses his footing as Managa comes up. Out Corver, far corner. Caleb, rhythm dribble is blocked by Sim. Wow. Good recovery. I'll say Garrett Sim at 6-1. Blocked 6-5, Caleb Corver. Armstead with the ball. Driving inside off the glass and good. Just took Antoine Young downtown. Wow. Yeah, left Antoine Young is in the dust. In the dust there. And Armstead goes in and lays it in with the left hand. As it's 32-30 now, Creighton. Managa up in the front court. Going to call a timeout and does. Got trapped along the near sideline. 6.26 remaining first half. We'll keep it right here. Jays up 32-30. Dana Allman in that signature pressing defense, that trapping defense. So far, it has forced Creighton into three turnovers. Ducks with two steals, and that time forcing the freshman Managa to call the timeout. Yeah, the biggest thing is it just it, it wears on you mentally, is knowing that every single time down the floor, you're probably going to have to deal with some sort of pressure. And there, that was just kind of a little run and jump action where you funnel him to the sideline and get him to pick up his dribble, and then you go slap a trap on him, and everybody rotates and takes away the next pass. But again, comes at you in waves. It comes at you in different 
phases, but it's pressing and it's pressure the entire time. 6.26 remaining first half. Caleb Corford inbound near side, front court. And we've got some uh, young guys down there cleaning off a little moisture, and they were ready to still on the floor before they could inbound. So now Caleb Corver triggers it in Managa. Out Antoine Young near the timeline. J.R. Strobridge on him. Young working the basketball now from near side to far side. Look at an Oregon Duck. Man-to-man -man defense. Top of the key, McDermott inside Echenique. Push in the back. Called on the Ducks. Number 31, Tyrone Nered. That'll be team foul number five. Second personal on Nered. Jays will inbound, fresh 35, 6-12 remaining first half, up 32-30 to Antoine Young. To inbound, and now Jovan Catron checks in for Nera. Catron back in the game. Antoine Young looks to get it in. Looking for the lob, ah, they go inside. Doug McDermott freed up on the inbound play, an easy layup right side of the glass. Make it much easier than that, easy basket for Doug McDermott. McDermott's now got seven. 34-30, Jays with a lead. Armstead on the wing, working against Antoine Young. Malcolm Armstead moves down to the left side, blocking foul. Gregory Etchenike out around the 19-foot mark. His first person of the team's third. First personal on Etchenike, third team foul on the Jays. Malcolm Armstead inbound for Oregon, left side out of their own hoop. Armstead looks to get it in, deep bound again, inbound again to J.R. Strobridge. Strobridge, the former guard from Nebraska, to Singler between the circles, left wing Armstead. Back over Singler, right wing driving down inside. There's a jumper on the way, another but nylon. It's the old spread. Everybody's accustomed to seeing that. Just a little side ball screen and Singler knocks it down. 34-32, Creighton with the lead, 34-32. 5.28 remaining first half. Young working against now the zone again. Managa on the right wing, looking inside to Echenique. He has pushed 19 feet out, back over to Managa to Young. There's McDermott inside on Catron. Ball up, down and good, right through Chauvin Catron. That's not easy to do. Really nice job of using his left hand to shield and get it away from the defense. Singler entry pass inside. Catron putting his shoulder down, traveled with the basketball. Gregory Echenique, the immovable force, but did, he did a nice turnover. But he did a nice job of sliding his feet there and almost kind of doing the old pull the chair out as Catron was expecting to be able to lean and regain his balance by leaning on Echenique, and Echenique kind of just slid away from him and it forced the travel. Under five minutes remaining, first half, Jays up 36-32. Long skip pass intended Managa. Managa, long skip pass Jones. Entry pass inside McDermott. Hook shot is good. Doug McDermott. Good aggressiveness out of the trap by the Blue Jays. 38-32 Jays back out to a six-point lead. Armstead working the ball against McDermott, puts a shoulder in him, out Catron. Baseline, three on the way, Sims. And Sim is fouled. And is that a foul on Josh Jones? His second personal. And going to the line will be Garrett Sim. And he is gonna shoot three free throws. Josh Jones, just silly. Doing the, yep, no excuse. I couldn't really tell if Sim kicked out that leg to try and create some contact. Sim knocks down the free throw on the season. Garrett Sim, not the guy you want to foul in a duck uniform at 83%. Jays just got a little extension, a little, yeah. little, got a little spread out. A little spread, and now letting the Ducks get back into it from the free throw line is checking into the ball game. Back in, DeAndre Williams. Catron checks out. Strobridge checks out. for Josh Jones. Jonathan Lloyd back on the floor for the Ducks. Singler in, along with Armstead. Garrett Sim at the line for Oregon. Third free throw on the way is good. He goes three for three, and it's 38-35 Creighton. McDermott looks to get it in. Does get it in Antoine Young. Young back over to McDermott. Doug on the move, in backcourt, hands off Young. Plenty of time, they trap him at the timeline. Young working against Lloyd down there. Over to Managa, back outside Darrell Ashford. Antoine Young between the circles. 4.15 and counting, first half. Jays up 38-35. Top of the key, Ashford, left wing, Antoine Young. Rhythm dribble, jumper on the way. No good, but a foul, and Young will go to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. Two silly fouls all around, fouling jump shooters on one end, fouling Sim on a three, and now fouling Antoine Young on a one dribble pull-up jump shot. Not smart. 
38-35, Creighton 408 remaining first half. Kenny Lawson Jr. getting set to check in for Creighton at the scorer's table. Antoine Young, two shots, knocks the first one down. 16 fouls on Oregon, four on the Jays. Echenique out, lost it in for Creighton. Antoine Young going back to the line. Young, his third point of the night. Antoine Young already six assists here in this game, and he rattles them both down. DeAndre Williams inbounds. Malcolm Armstead across the timeline. Sets up long, quick three on the way. Barely found iron into the hands of Ashford. Daryl Ashford off the bench. He's had a quiet CBI. Finds Managa on the wing. Long skip pass Antoine Young. Young looks in the corner to McDermott. And Doug dribbled it on the end line. Turnover Creighton time out of the floor. Oregon Fourth turnover on the Jays. 349 remaining first half. Creighton up 40-35 on the Oregon Ducks back after this on AM 590. Midtown Crossing offers the perfect balance of sophistication and convenience in the heart of Omaha. Living at Midtown Crossing means more fun and less fuss. Midtown Crossing is a unique urban development, a one-stop shopping and dining district with a vibrant mix of distinctive shops, exclusive four-star restaurants, the best of Omaha's local bakeries and grocers, and a five-screen cinema with in-seat dining and more. Shop. Eat, indulge, it's all right here. Find out more at midtowncrossing.com. Want to look like a top dog? Well, here's your styling machine. The all new 2011 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. It's a hot drive. At 31 miles per gallon, you won't be wasting your party money. Push button start, awesome sunroof, Rockford Fosgate sound for under 19 grand. And we take trade-ins, lock it in. The Outlander Sport, test drive and buy at Omaha Mitsubishi. 182nd at Dodge or OmahaMitsubishi.com. The Players Club at Deer Creek offers one of the most unique and challenging championship golf courses in the region. Designed by Arnold Palmer with generous bent grass fairways, winding waterways, and sculptured bunkers, the Players Club is a golfer's dream. And becoming a member has never been easier. For membership information and tee times, call 963-9950. 963-9950. The Players Club, just north of 120th and Military in Omaha. Time for our Omaha Orthopedic and Sports Medicine trivia question. Creighton is 4-7 and seven all time when facing former head coaches. And obviously tonight, Dane Altman, 16 years on the hilltop here. He's the head coach for the Creighton Blue Jays now facing, or now with Oregon, and Creighton facing Oregon. Was the question is, when was the last time Creighton faced a former head coach? I'll have that answer for you. First media time out of the second half. 349 remaining first half. Jays up 40-35. Costly turnovers. For the, for the Blue Jays, Nick, that turnover right there, Doug McDermott down on the end line, just dribbled the ball out of bounds, called for the turnover. Oregon has made eight out of their yeah. last 11 field goals. Slowly things are shifting, although Creighton has the lead. feel like things are changing a little bit. DeAndre Williams looking inside, goes left elbow, then back outside. Down inside, shot off the glass is good. Malcolm Armstead with a layup. He's a strong kid. Jahans Managa with the basketball over to Antoine Young up the center of the floor. Dean Alman calls off the dogs. They settle back in a 2-3 zone. High wing right side to Managa. Being denied is Lawson fighting down there with DeAndre Williams. Now McDermott up on the wing, top of the key, Managa. Jahans on the move. Working against this zone, Antoine Young, door shut by Williams. Over to Ashford. To Managa, eight on the shot clock. Out Ashford, right wing, Antoine Young. Shaking and bacon, baseline. Out Lawson, three on the way, air ball. Here comes Armstead for Oregon. Lead pass, Sim down inside, knocked away by Kenny Lawson Jr. It'll stay with the Ducks. Blue Jays, not a good offensive possession that last time down. And although Creighton shooting 66% from the floor, slowly but surely this matchup zone has got Creighton a little bit flustered and standing on their heels a little bit. Jonathan Lloyd to inbound, gets it in. Singler up on the wing, near side. Singler, top of the key, Armstead between the circles. Armstead on the move. Fakes Singler, Singler inside on the move. Singler blocked by Echenique. Kept the ball alive, up Ashford. Ashford, right wing, Young. Three on the way, air ball. Kenny Lawson Jr.'s got that ball. He's going up strong, and he puts it off over the rim and good. Very strong with the ball Kenny Lawson is. Managa goes for the steal, can't get it, Armstead's got it. Driving inside, and 
Jonathan Lloyd going to the line. Lloyd is really quick. Put that ball on the floor, drove hard to the right. Lawson Jr. called for the foul. He and Echenique on the floor. One of those rare minutes where they're both on the floor at the same time. Now Lawson out, McDermott back in. 42-37, Creighton. Jonathan Lloyd to inbound, looks to get it in. Long baseball pass all the way down the floor to DeAndre Williams. And now he'll hand back off to Malcolm Armstead. Here he comes on the run. Armstead inside, that football move. Offensive foul, Armstead running over. Jahens Managa. Nice job by the freshman for taking one for his team. Well, that's twice Armstead's just gone to his left, his strong hand, and kind of put that ball under his shoulder with like almost a football and used that offhand to shield off the defender, and there he got caught. Jay's up in the front court. Doug McDermott with the basketball now. Working the dribble. Hands off Managa. Under two minutes remaining, first half. Jay's with a 42-37 lead. Darrell Ashford to Managa, high wing right side. Doug McDermott working against DeAndre Williams down on the block. There's Echenique left side. He's double teamed. So Managa looking, looking. Back Ashford, back Managa. Right wing, Antoine Young. Shaking and baking. Back out Managa. He'll put it on the floor. Dishes off. Echenique ball stripped away. And it will stay with Creighton with one second on the shot clock. So Creighton's going to have to do something in a hurry as they inbound left side under their own bucket. Some slip into the rim. Antoine Young, ball in hand, lob inside. McDermott puts that ball up, no good. The tip it is good by Darrell Ashford, who snuck inside. What a play. Great play by Ashford. One-handed, ball never came into his other hand. 44-37, Creighton, 120 and counting first half. Sim to Lloyd. Lloyd on the left wing, shadowed by McDermott. Driving baseline, kicks out. Armstead, DeAndre Williams, three on the way, no good. Rebound, Echenique. Up Antoine Young into front court. Young at the free throw line, reverses the ball, McDermott. Doug, left wing, left elbow. Antoine Young, jumper, barely draws iron into the hands of Sim on the run. Sim over to DeAndre William. He'll pull it back. Back out Sim, ball tipped by Ashford. Tipped out of bounds, but quick hands by Ashford. It'll stay with Oregon. Good activity by the Creighton Blue Jays in this crowd on their feet, applauding it. 50, 44, 37, 52 seconds left first half. That's Coach Altman going with a little offense, defense. Coach Altman's going to call a timeout. Timeout for the Oregon Ducks. Jays up 44, 37. We'll keep it right here. Just take a look at some of the numbers for us, well, Mr. Baugh. Again, just like all the other CBI games, it's been an offensive explosion for both teams. Creighton shooting 61% from the floor and 60% from downtown. Everybody that's played except for Wayne Runnels has scored. They're led by Doug McDermott with 11 points. Gregory Echenique has eight points. Gi Giants Managai has got nine points. It's just been an all-around good effort by Creighton. Offensively, 13 team assists on 16 made baskets, four turnovers for Creighton. And, uh, and Oregon shooting 51% from the floor, 46% from downtown. Just all around a pretty good first half of basketball offensively. Both, both teams. Ways. Yep, both teams have made six threes. All right, here we go. 52 seconds left. Jay's up 44-37. It'll be Oregon basketball coming out. J.R. Strobridge, Garrett Sim, Tyrone Nered, along with E.J. Singler and Malcolm Armstead. So Sim inbounds Armstead out near the timeline. He'll move to the left wing with Antoine Young on him. Hands off Strobridge. Strobridge works out between the circles. Strobridge looking to drive down left side. Kicks it back out. That ball knocked away by Jahens Managai. Great D, 17 on the shot clock for the Ducks. Managai is playing with, he's a different player here late in the season. And now Greg McDermott trying to get a sub on the floor, and that's going to be Caleb Corver for Daryl Ashford. J.R. Strobridge inbound, near side, front court. Inbounds to Malcolm Armstead, near side, near the timeline. Now Armstead moves up to the three-point line. Hard drive to the left. Kicks out Strobridge. Ball stripped away again by Managa. But it will stay with the Ducks with 10 on the shot clock. Boy, really good hands by Managa. Strobridge was trying to rise up for a three, and he knocked it out of his hands. 10 on the clock. Armstead now to inbound, near side, front court. This could be a handoff to Armstead. Armstead gets it in. Singler, hands off Armstead, looking to drive, right side, down inside, floater on the way, barely draws iron, kicked around, and will be off of the Ducks. 
Nayrad, the last to touch it, and the Jays will get it with 25 seconds remaining first half. Shot clock off. Jays can hold for the final shot. Josh Jones going to check in for Caleb Corver. Young Jones, Managa, McDermott, and Echenique for Greg McDermott and the Jays. Full court pressure by Oregon. Up on everybody. Williams on the inbound man. That's McDermott. They find Echenique, middle of the floor. Chins the ball, hands off Antoine Young. Going to try to trap him, and they do. Finds Echenique in front court. Chins that ball again. You wouldn't want to get it away from him. Over to Antoine with 15, with 14. Jays up 44-37. Clock rolling first half. Down to 10. Down to 8. Young, right side. 6, 5. Josh Jones on the wing. Rises up for an NBA 3 off the iron. No good. Into the hands of Oregon. And the first half will end with Creighton taking a 7-point lead into the locker room. It's halftime at Quest Center Omaha. Game one of the CBI Championship Series. Creighton leads 44 to 37. We'll be back with halftime after this on AM 590. Talent, teamwork, and commitment. Put them together, you have a formula for excellence. That's why at Omaha Orthopedic Clinic and Sports Medicine, they've assembled a team of the most talented surgeons. Dr. Richard Murphy, Dr. Michael Morrison, Dr. Peter Semino, Dr. Jason Michaels, and a great support staff, all working together, all committed to one goal, to utilize the latest treatments and technologies that will provide their patients with the highest quality health care possible. Find out more. Go to omahaorthopedic.com. Omaha Orthopedic Clinic and Sports Medicine, a practice of excellence since 1934. Creighton Athletics would like to thank the following Wheels Club sponsors for their support. Plaza Pontiac Buick GMC, Deers Ford Lincoln Mercury, Auto Express, Old Mill Toyota, Classic Chevrolet Cadillac and Lake Manawan Nissan Kia, Roten Auto Center, Sid Dillon Buick Pontiac Cadillac Mazda, Tincher Auto Mall, h and Chevrolet, and Roy's Grand Dodge Chrysler Jeep Mazda. Big Brothers are regular guys just like you. Carpenters, lawyers, teachers, businessmen, and fathers. Men who want to share their life experience with a kid like me who needs their friendship. My big brother Joe and I meet every Sunday. Mostly we play basketball. What matters most is that he is always there when I need him. Being a big is easier than you may think. Become a big brother with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Call 402-505-3075 or visit bbbsomaha.org. Start making a difference today. Oh, you got all of that one. Enjoy the long walk in the short grass. For thousands of clients nationwide, Golf Tech's certified personal coaches have used superior swing technology and a proven teaching approach to build a game you can trust. Located just off 114th and Dodge Street, call 402-905-2990 for more information or online at golftechtec.com. Golf Tech, expect to improve. It is halftime here at Quest Center. Omaha, T. Scott Moore, Nick Ball here with you. Creighton leading Oregon 44 to 37. And Nick, you know, take all the drama out of this basketball game. Forget about former coaches and, and all that stuff. Pretty good ball game. A team out of the Missouri Valley Conference taking on a team out of the Pac-10 here in a three-game series of the CBI. Creighton puts up 44. Oregon puts up 37. Again, not a lot of defense. But both teams playing pretty well. Only four turnovers for Creighton, four for Oregon. Both, both teams really, was a, they were able to flex their muscles offensively. Uh, Oregon was able to get what they wanted pretty much in the half court. Uh, a lot of uh, isolations for Catron, a lot of penetration kick threes for different guys. Strobridge came off the bench and gave Oregon a big lift. And for Creighton, they did a great job moving the ball. 13 team assists in that first half. And Creighton got a lot of great looks in the half court and everybody contributed. So both teams doing a great job offensively. Again, this game's gonna come down to who can impose their will defensively. And it's two different styles. Obviously, Greg McDermott going with the man-to-man -man defense and Dane Altman going with that matchup zone. And the zone, I thought as the half wore on, I thought got to Creighton a little bit. I thought early on in the first half, Creighton did a nice job of pushing it in transition and getting some easy looks uh, before that zone could get set. But once that zone got set, if they were, at, were stagnant at all, Creighton struggled a little bit, but you're right. It's been a great, it's been a well-played game, two contrasting styles, but uh, if you like offense, this is definitely the game for you. 44-37 here at the half, and we're going to take a break. When we come back, Nick Baugh will take a look at your first-half stats for you. 
This is Blue Jay Basketball on AM 590 Omaha's ESPN Radio. Aaron Lewis of Stained, solo and acoustic. April 21st, Harris Convention Center. on top of your game with the primary care physicians and specialists of Creighton Medical Associates. They'll give it all they've got to ensure the finest medical care for you and your family, from newborns to senior citizens. Stick with the winning team of Creighton Medical Associates because good health is the right play of the game. Visit www.findyourphysician for a Creighton Medical Associates physician right for you and your family. Or call 402-280-2010. 402-280-2010. If Roy's Grand Dodge were a basketball team, it would play with the fearless intensity of the Creighton Blue Jays. But when it comes to easing your fear of buying a new vehicle, nothing compares to Roy's. Roy's Grand Dodge in Grand Island offers legendary savings on a great selection of Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep vehicles with service that will fill you with confidence. Who can you count on for fearless basketball? The Creighton Blue Jays. Who can make you confident about buying a new vehicle? Roy can. He always does. Roy's Grand Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, and Grand Island, and at roysgrand.com. The home of the Creighton Blue Jays. Creighton Blue Jays. AM 590. 590. KXSP. Omaha's new home for ESPN Radio. Radio. Halftime here at the Quest Center. T. Scott Moore Nick Ball with you tonight. Thanks for joining us. Blue Jays lead the Oregon Ducks 44-37. Game one of the best of three championship series here in the CBI. And with your first half stats, here's Nick Ball. Again, offensive explosion. For both teams, Creighton first and foremost out rebounds Oregon 14 to 11. Creighton has 13 team assists on 16 made baskets. That's just fantastic. And only four turnovers. Creighton shoots 59% from the floor, 16 to 27, 54% from downtown, 6 of 11, and 6 of 6 from the free throw line. Everybody scored who played except for Wayne Runnels in a Blue Jay uniform. Again, everybody contributed. Doug McDermott setting the tone out the gates and played really well, 11 points. And one rebound, one assist, one turnover in 17 minutes. Four of six from the floor, one for two from downtown, two for two from the free throw line. Nine points for Giants man, a guy. He was three of four from downtown. Two assists, one turnover, one seal. Giants was really active, did a good job against his own and defensively. Gregory Achenike looked very strong in that first half. Good matchup against Jovan Catron, big body boy for Oregon. Eight points, five rebounds for Gregory Achenike. Perfect three of three from the floor, two for two from downtown. Does have one block in 15 minutes of action. Four points for Antoine Young, one for four from the floor, two for four, or two for two from the free throw line, but Antoine has six assists, one turnover. Six assists and one turnover. Now 33 assists and one turnover so far in the CBI. Doing just a great job handling the ball. Just tremendous in that regard. Kenny Lawson Jr. came off the bench, had four points and one rebound in six minutes. He was two or four from the floor. Three points for Caleb Corver to go along with two rebounds and two assists in 11 minutes. He was one for two from the floor. And Josh Jones has had three points, one assist in five minutes. He's one for three from the floor. Fouch, and then Daryl Ashford had two points and four rebounds in five minutes of action. Ash, or Josh Jones had, has two personal fouls, and Kenny Lawson picked up two personal fouls as well in that first half. And Oregon shoots 50% from the floor, 14 of 28. 46% from the floor, 6 of 13, 3 of 3 from the free throw line, 9 assists on 14 made baskets. They were led by J.R. Strowbridge off the, off the bench who had 8 points. 7 points for Mark Malcolm Arstead off the bench and 4 assists. And 6 points for Garrett Sim, four, 5 points for E.J. Singler, 4 points for Tyrone Nayrad, 4 points for Jovan Catron, 3 points for Jonathan Lloyd who's jet quick. 
and DeAndre Williams did not score in 10 minutes of action. Points in the paint in favor of the Jays, 18 to 10 points off turnovers in favor of Oregon, 6 to 4. Second chance points in favor of the Ducks, 8 to 4. Fast break points in favor of the Ducks, 2 nothing. And bench points in favor of Oregon, 15 to 9. And those are your first half stats. All right, we're now joined by Blue Jay Director of Basketball Operations, Eric Crawford. And Croft, what did you think of that first half? I thought it was a good half. Uh, first of all, I think the environment here is amazing for a college basketball game. Um, but the first half was good. We got out uh, playing our pace. We had a lot of fast break baskets. We shot the three really well like we had been doing in the past couple games. Um, but then, you know, their zone started to slow the game down a little bit more, kind of play somewhat of their tempo, although they like to play pretty fast too, but it just slowed our break down. Um, you know, we, we struggled a little bit there in the middle of, of getting the ball moved and trying to get it inside and, you know, using better judgment on some of our three-point shots. But, you know, overall, we played a pretty good first half. What is some things that Greg McDermott's preaching to the guys going against the matchup zone? What does he want to see? You know, we just want to see more ball movement and player movement. Uh, they haven't really stopped us inside if we've been able to catch it deep. When we catch it a little bit off the block, they've came from the ball side wing and doubled us. And really, it's kind of hurt our post play. But when, when Gregory's been able to work and catch it deep, he's, he's had a great night in there scoring the basketball. Even Doug's been able to do it. When he catches it deep and, and makes a quick move, he's been able to score. So that's kind of what we're preaching. Move the ball, cut, find openings in the zone, and, and, and you know get your feet set ready to shoot it. B biggest concern with them offensively would be what? I mean, J.R. Strobridge came off the bench and had a, it gave him a big lift with eight points. Is it Catron? You think he's still the guy that you got to contain? I thought Ed Chinique did a pretty good job on him. What, what are some things that you're concerned about making sure you stay locked in on defensively? You know, first and foremost, just the transition. They heard us in transition. Uh, Strobridge, like you said, came in, and he's got such a quick release on his shot that you got to be near him. Um, but, yeah, Catron, he's still going to be our focus. Uh, Gregory has done a good job on him. I think his size and Gregory's foot speed has kind of bothered him a little bit. Uh, Catron likes to use his power and, and really going against Greg, it's, it's kind of a wash. So uh, I think hopefully if Greg stays out of foul trouble, that'll be a good matchup for us throughout the game. But we just can't let Singer get going. We did a good job holding them two or six shooting the first. And as long as we can continue to do that, we'll be all right. Nice first half. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Croft. He's got like a smile on his face. The team's got a seven-point lead here. Nice job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for joining much. us. Thanks, Croft. Eric Crawford joining us here. We're going to take a break, come back. And halftime will continue here from Quest Center Mall, where Creighton leads Oregon 44 to 37. Game one of the best of three championship series here in the CBI. Nick Bond will be back after this on AM 590. Creighton Baseball has a new home. It's TD Ameritrade Park, Omaha. Be a part of the historic inaugural season this spring when the Blue Jays make the move to the new downtown stadium. It's the start of a new era for Creighton, the best offensive team in college baseball. Season tickets start at only $144 and include the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament played at TD Ameritrade Park. Get your season tickets now by calling 280-JAYS. That's 280-JAYS. Creighton Baseball at TD Ameritrade Park. First game is April 19th. Be a part of the historic inaugural season this spring. The new era of Creighton University has begun with the ability to excel, the wisdom to innovate, a commitment to values, the willingness to serve, and the faith to believe. One of the finest Jesuit Catholic universities in the United States. We are Creighton University, willing to lead. See for yourself at Creighton.edu. So you've been thinking about upgrading your sound system, but yeah, it's time to stop thinking and act. Kidwell can help you secure a sound system at a price that fits your budget. The economy has made it a buyer's paradise. Vendors are slashing their prices, and Kidwell can purchase and install a system that's right for your needs. You won't believe how good you sound and how much money you've saved. Your presentation will finally have the pizzazz your audience is craving. Call Kidwell today, the leaders in technology solutions. Safe and effective. Now you get both guaranteed. Eight Ball Nutrition products are manufactured right here in Omaha and are guaranteed to be free of any banned substances as governed by the NCAA and World Anti-Doping Agency. Vitamins, proteins, amino acids, pre-workout boosters, and more, Eight Ball Nutrition offers student-athlete, military, law enforcement, and firefighter discounts. Products and discounts are available at 8ballnutrition.com or stop by 13724 Industrial Road. 8-Ball Nutrition, university tested, athlete approved. 
New Trend Dry Cleaners is your answer for dry cleaning. With five metro locations and prices 50 to 75% less than most competitors, there's no reason to take your clothes anywhere else. Just $3.50 for most items, $2.25 for men's shirts. While other cleaners send your leather and suede out of town, New Trend cleans them right here at their plants in Omaha. Wedding gown preservation? New Trend can do it. Dry clean your Ugg boots? New Trend can do it. Five locations of the Metro, including Village Point. Find a New Trend Dry Cleaners near you. Go to NewTrendDryCleaners.com. Hi, Gene Steffi for Gene Steffi's Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Fremont. Looking for a new or used vehicle? You are invited to shop Gene Steffi's. We offer you friendly sales, certified service people, prices that will make you smile, and a large selection of new and used vehicles. Our goal is to earn your business. We're the people you can count on. Visit us or shop us at our friendly internet site, www.genesteffy.com. And as a Creighton alum, go Jays! Creighton Baseball has a new home. It's TD Ameritrade Park, Omaha. Be a part of the historic inaugural season this spring when the Blue Jays make the move to the new downtown stadium. It's the start of a new era for Creighton, the best offensive team in college baseball. Season tickets start at only $144 and include the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament played at TD Ameritrade Park. Get your season tickets now by calling 280-JAYS. That's 280-JAYS. Creighton Baseball at TD Ameritrade Park. First game is April 19th. Be a part of the historic inaugural season this spring. Robert's Dairy has been getting milk from local dairy farms like mine for more than 100 years. When people ask me about going green, I tell them it's what we've always done to ensure healthy cows that produce pure, wholesome milk with absolutely no added growth hormones. This is a way of life to us, one I want to preserve for my family and for future generations. Learn more at robertsdairy.com. Time's over. Just about set for the second half of basketball. Always nice to have the lead coming out of the locker room at halftime, Nick. Have a little seven-point cushion to work with. Important for the Blue Jays to get off to a good start, just as they did to begin this ball game. You know, and the interesting thing is that Catron all season long has produced some big second half performances. He's averaging nine of his 15 points per game in the second half. Yeah. So he's a guy that, that saves his best for last. So you really got to think that they're going to go to him early and often. It's going to be really important for Echenique to be ready to slide his feet, do his work early, not pick up any cheap fouls. Echenique with already one personal foul doesn't need to be off the floor because he's played well, hasn't missed a shot from the field. Uh, but certainly the first four minutes is going to be very important. Got to continue to move the body and get a lot of cutters against this matchup zone because when you just stand in the perimeter trust me I've played this matchup zone it's real easy to defend if you're just gonna stand in a spot we'll just shift and we'll talk and you'll really have some issues so Crane's got to make sure they keep on moving all right the Jays will get the ball to start this second half up 44 37 Caleb Corver inbounds near side midcourt Antoine Young work on one-on-one -on -one with Malcolm Armstead takes him up between the circles now and is Stripped of the ball, and Armstead's going in for the layup. Antoine Young simply got his pocket picked. Well, Mark, Malcolm Armstead has an Oregon single-season record with steals with 80. Make it 81 now. Now Armstead feeling it as they go inside to Echenique. Lost it, got it back, and then flushes it over the rim. Wow. 4-4 four, four from the field. Echenique, 10 points. Singler down inside. Catron, fadeaway jumper is good. Jovan Catron answers, 46-41, we trade buckets. Against second team all Pac-10, Jovan Catron was. He is a big time player, scored over 1,000 points, over 700 rebounds in his career. He's not gonna go away lightly in his last game. They go down inside, Echenique kicks back out, Managop out Korver. Wide open for the three, Caleb buries it. Three ball, nothing but nylon. Good to see Caleb Korver ready to shoot the basketball. That's what he has to do. He's knocked down two threes in this game, six points for the senior. Jays up 49-41, just underway second half. Singler with the ball, high wing left side, now moving to the center of the floor, finds Catron on the move. Jovan Catron down inside, shot up wild, no good. Rebounded by Catron, jump ball as Catron tied up by Doug McDermott. Ball will stay with Oregon on the alternating possession arrow. Just trying to isolate Catron on Echenique on the right side of the floor and let him drive it at the big boy. The inbound, up and over. Tyrone Nared spins inside, shot off the glass, no good. McDermott with the ball. Up to Antoine Young, reach in foul, Malcolm Armstead. Number 11, Malcolm Armstead, his second personal foul. Really aggressive for steals. 
Taking a chance, got called for the foul. His second, 49-41, just underway here. Creighton with a lead, second half. Antoine Young up the right side, near side, the unflappable junior. Working the ball on the wing. Left wing now, Corver to Managa, looking inside at Janike. Long skip pass, McDermott puts it on the floor. Singler stops him, out Corver. Left wing, Managa, wide open, three on the way. Off the iron, no good, rebound, Armstead, here come the Ducks. On the run, center on the floor, Malcolm Armstead, bounce pass. Managa almost had it, but he kicked it with his toe, and it'll stay with Oregon. And Oregon is relentless in transition. They're gonna push every single time. Gotta make sure you sprint back. Caleb Corver and Jahans Managa did just that, and we're waiting on yeah. Malcolm Armstead. Good 49, job. 41, Jays with the lead, 18, 13 remaining, second half. Armstead to inbound. Looks to get it in, does, and an offensive foul on Tyrone Nayred. And Managa is just doing a little bit of everything yeah. for Creighton tonight. Jahans Managa, the true freshman out of Ontario, Canada. And that, that's three on Tyrone Nayred. And he is coming out, and in his place, DeAndre Williams, 6'4", junior. Dane Alban loses a little side size. Narrowed at 6'8. Williams at 6'4. Jays work it up, up 49-41. Into front court to Managa. Back young. High wing right side Corver. A cutting Managa at the elbow. Outlet. McDermott. Three on the way. Nothing but nylon. Dougie boy. Great cut to the middle of the zone by Managa and immediately looks opposite. McDermott buries a triple. 14 for Dougie. Singler driving inside. Shot up. Tipped. Corver with a rebound. They've got him tied up and he gets it out to Antoine Young on the run. Right side, far side. Young out Managa. The freshman off the iron. No good. Rebound. Catron. What a great play by Antoine Young though. Back up they come. Williams out Armstead to Catron. Pump fake. Couple of pump fakes. Echenique held his ground to Singler. Singler back over Catron. He'll rise up, jumper sure. on the way. No good. Tracked down by Corver. Up Antoine Young. Jays up 52 41. Young on the run. Reverses the ball. Managa drives inside. Lost it. Got it back. Out McDermott. Same spot. Three ball. Air ball. Kicked out of there. And they are going to call a foul on Gregory Echenique, his second. Number oh, boy. That's his second personal foul. The Blue Jays first Battling for that rebound. Wouldn't be surprised if Coach Altman looks to isolate Catron on oh, Echenique absolutely. again. Malcolm Armstead walks it to the timeline. Jays up 52-41. Largest lead of the night for Creighton for either team. As Armstead out Catron. Three on the way from the wing. Off the iron, no good. Long rebound into the hands of Young. Jays on the run, no numbers. Antoine Young down inside. McDermott, great up and under move. Doug McDermott, just right place, right time. Well, Creighton's been really good at transition in this tournament. It's all been because of the decision making of Antoine Young. A cutting sim down inside. Ball tipped away into the hands of Jahans Managa. Got a hand in there, Managa on the run. No numbers, Managa to McDermott. Shot up, no good, but a foul. And again, Creighton in transition. And Doug McDermott going to the line to shoot two. McDermott on the night, 16 points. Well, that's defense creating offense, a steal for the Blue Jays, and they immediately push it right back down Oregon's throat, and ultimately Doug McDermott gets fouled. McDermott makes that free throw, and again, it was Jahans Managa, the freshman guard, getting a hand in the action. Well, and Doug McDermott's done a fantastic job of sprinting in transition. And you've seen a couple times now, even if he doesn't get the ball, he sprints down to that baseline, and it flattens out the defense. McDermott knocks them both down. Doug with 18 points on the night. Here comes Oregon, down 56-41, just three and a half minutes into the second half. Creighton extending the lead as Lloyd puts on the afterburners. Kicks back outside. Williams, top of the key, Catron. He's their money man. Jovan Catron inside. Ball tipped by Managa. Sims, Managa's got it. Can he save it? Finds McDermott running the floor. Off the glass. No good, but a foul on DeAndre Williams. What a play by Jahans Managa. I've seen it all. Wow. Managa got the ball loose, then out hustled Sim for it. Dove on the floor. Here comes Lloyd. Back up DeAndre. DeAndre Williams. There's a jumper on the way. No good. McDermott's with the rebound. Managa, or rather McDermott. Young to Corver. Looking inside. Kenny Lawson Jr. And a holding foul down inside 
on Tiandre Williams. Timeout on the floor. 15-50 remaining second half. Jays up 58-41. And the freshman Jahins Managa wow. is feeling the love That's from quite, the Blue Jay crowd. Quite possibly the best play of the season right there. We'll be back after this. This is Blue Jay basketball on AM 590. You won't find a better dry cleaner than Fashion Cleaners. They are the best. You hear that when you talk to Omaha's locally owned clothing retailers. People who have been in the fine clothing business for a long time. I've been using Fashion Cleaners for over 25 years. John Lindley from Lindley Clothing on the northeast corner of 132nd and Dodge has worked with Omaha businessmen for years. He understands customers who value the details. Like a dress shirt, always done the right way. You know, I recommend fashion for most of my customers. Their service has been absolutely unbelievable. When you care about your clothing and want it to look as good as the day you bought it, choose the dry cleaner voted best of Omaha. When they deliver my dry cleaning, when they bring it in the door, you can just see that it's done right. Find out why people who know clothing choose fashion cleaners and America's best cleaner. For a location close to you or to sign up for home delivery, just go to fashioncleaners.com. Because your style matters. Talent, teamwork, and commitment. Put them together, you have a formula for excellence. That's why at Omaha Orthopedic Clinic and Sports Medicine, they've assembled a team of the most talented surgeons. Dr. Richard Murphy, Dr. Michael Morrison, Dr. Peter Semino, Dr. Jason Michaels, and a great support staff, all working together, all committed to one goal, to utilize the latest treatments and technologies that will provide their patients with the highest quality health care possible. Find out more. Go to omahaorthopedic.com. Omaha Orthopedic Clinic and Sports Medicine, a practice of excellence since 1934. Here's the answer to our Omaha Orthopedic and Sports Medicine trivia question. Creighton is 4-7 and seven all time when facing former head coaches. The question is, obviously Dana Altman, 16 years, head coach for Creighton, now head coach at Oregon. Creighton playing Oregon tonight here at the Quest Center. When was the last time Creighton played a former head coach? The answer is December 20th, 1998. Creighton played Oklahoma State, obviously former coach Eddie Sutton, and they won. 66 to 60. That trivia question brought to you by Omaha Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. Caleb Corver inbounds for the Jays. Managa with it to Young. Offensive foul on Creighton. Offensive foul against Creighton's number 12, John Hanks Managa. Managa this time called for the offensive foul. Should be noted that Doug McDermott now with 20 points. Highest scoring freshman in Missouri Valley Conference history with 561 points. Passes Cleo Little in from Wichita State. He did it back in 1951. This conference been, has been around for 100 Ooh. years. Lloyd with the basketball. Right elbow. Williams for three. DeAndre Williams no good. Rebound Singler. Singler shot up. Is good. Up and over the outstretched hands of Kenny Lawson Jr. Past six games, Singler's been averaging 16 points per game. Doing a great job. And Singler's got seven now. 58-43 Creighton. Managa looks to get rid of the ball. Finally finds Corver. Corver back Managa. Antoine Young again being denied. Now Jahens finds Antoine Young between the circles. Jay's up. First five minutes gone. Second half. Antoine Young picks up his dribble. Finds Corver. Back over Young. High wing. To Managa. Puts it on the floor. Looking to get rid of it. Finds Doug McDermott. Lost his footing. Got it back. Back out Managa. Skip pass. Corver. Shot on the way. It's a three ball. Not even close. Corver with a rebound. And an offensive foul on Cor or on Doug McDermott going for position. Foul against number three. Doug Greg McDermott Doug upset Doug saying that Singler did the exact same thing on the other end with the offensive rebound put back. Substitutions for the Ducks. 58-43. Creighton with the lead. 14-52 remaining. Sim out. J.R. Strobridge back in. Instant offense along with Malcolm Armstead. The leading assist man in an Oregon uniform. Now Jonathan Lloyd up into front court to Armstead. Back Lloyd between the circles. Over to Catron, right baseline. Strobridge wing, three on the way, air ball. And saved by Singler, who's going to get it. It's into the hands of Catron, up off the glass and good. Look what I found. Loose balls there, good hustle by Oregon, and Catron's the beneficiary of it with a layup. Antoine Young works it up against Strobridge. Out McDermott, driving baseline, kicks out Corver. Puts the ball on the floor, hand check. Jonathan Lloyd, team foul number five on Oregon. I'd like to see Caleb Corbett take that shot. I would like to see him turn down the previous one and take that one. I thought this one was more in rhythm. And he'll take a seat now as Josh Jones checks in for him. Antoine Young. Nope, they get Jahans Banna got an inbound for the Blue Jays. Left side into the Blue Jay hoop deep inbound Young. Beyond the three-point arc, Jays up 58-45. Young gives it up to Managa near wing. 
Managa looking for Lawson, top of the key. Kenny puts the ball on the floor, moves to the wing, reverses the ball. Managa finds McDermott, nothing doing there. Inside to Lawson, turnaround jumper is good. Kenny Lawson Jr. from 13 feet up and over Jovan Gatron. Zone is vulnerable right at the free throw line, and that's where Kenny Lawson cuts to, catches it, turns, and scores. Especially if you're 6'9". Yeah, Ray's up over everybody. Jay's up 15 now. 60-45, Creighton out, arms down on the wing. Guarded by Josh Jones. Jones almost stole that basketball away. Now Singler, wing, three on the way. Off the iron, no good. Gatron rebound. Jovan Gatron backing in on Lawson. Shot up, foul on Kenny Lawson Jr. Jovan Catron going to the free throw line to shoot two. That's three on Lawson now. 13-35, remaining second half. Jay's up 60-45. Gregory Echenique to check in. First opportunity, Jovan Catron going to the free throw line. His first trip to the line tonight on the season. Catron, a 72% free throw shooter. Wayne Runnels getting set to check in for the Blue Jays as well as Catron knocks down the free throw. Lawson out, Echenique in. Yep, Lawson out. Runnels joining Echenique on the floor along with Josh Jones. Giants, Managon, Antoine Young. Jovan Catron back to the free throw line. One more free throw coming his way. Catron looking for his 10th point, and he has it. Two for two, that trip down. Full court pressure on the basketball. Runnels looks to get it in. Denying the basketball, they get it in at Chenique. Gregory looking for Runnels. He's got Wayne. Wayne into front court. Finds Jahins Managa. Managa sets up on the wing to Antoine Young. Inside the free throw line. Young, the floater, is no good. And Echenique had it, but didn't want to get goaltending. Strobridge on the run. Strobridge layup, no good. Blocking foul on Jahins Managa. Boy, Antoine Young, that shot was all but in. And ultimately goes to Strobridge, and he shot out of a cannon and goes right to the rim and is able to slide past Managa ever so slightly as he was set to take a charge, and they call the foul, and Strobridge will be looking to get into double figures as he has eight points at the free throw line now. 78% free throw shooter, J.R. Strobridge. Misses the free throw. Jay's up 60-47. Trying to survive a little Oregon Duck run here with 13-19 remaining second half. Again, got to be ready to handle the press if this free throw goes in. Back into the ball game. Tyrone Nerid playing with three fouls. Strobridge at the line. Free throw on the way is good. And that will allow Oregon to set that press. Wayne Runnels, the man to try to get it in. Gets it in Antoine Young. He is trapped, but he will dribble through that pressure. Trapped. And they go to Echenique. Hands back off Young. Young worth the basketball between the circles. Jay's up 60-48. Left wing, Corver. Flips it over to Jahens Managa between the circles. Right wing now, Antoine Young. Inside free throw line, Runnels inside Echenique. Oh. Tried a floater. Gregory just tried to put it over the rim without coming down on his feet. As Lloyd shakes and bakes. Top of the key, Catron. Three on the way off the rim, no good. Tipped to the hands of Young. Antoine on the run, two on two. Young in traffic, floater on the way, is no good, but a foul from behind, I think it's on Nerritt, and that is four. Came in from behind and pushed Antoine Young in the back. Young will go to the free throw line for the second time tonight. Antoine, two for two from the line tonight. Good push of the basketball, and I think it surprised Nerritt that Antoine just stopped and popped right at the free throw line, and he could put on the brakes and fouls. Antoine Young, and that's huge because I think Nerid is a tough matchup for yeah, Creighton and, and could really have an impact on this game, and he just hasn't been able to get in the flow of things as now he picks up a foul. Antoine Young's free throw is good. Substitution for Oregon is number three, Karen Sim, and for the Blue Jays. Of course, Young on the season, very good at 75% from the charity stripe. Going back to the line, his team up 61-48. to 48. Creighton is led by as many as 17, and Young puts oh up an air ball. And Greg McDermott just <laughs> smiling at his point guard, <laughs> and now pulling him over, and he'll come out of the game, and well, what that is. Daryl Ashford that was, will that come That was in. the sophomore year, Antoine Young, from the free throw line. All right, Jonathan Lloyd in here. Bench has got to hold up their own for the Jays. J.R. Strobridge, free throw line, down inside. Sim, back out Lloyd, inside the free throw line, drives down inside off the glass, and good. That's the old dribble weave that Coach Altman likes to run, just getting ahead of steam and driving the ball at the hoop. Garrett Sim. Now they go to Managa. Top of the key, Echenique, left wing, Corver. Turns down an open three, back out, Managa. At the point for the Jays, buying some time for Antoine Young. Jays run a little weave of their own, now right wing, Runnels. Out Managa, picked up by Lloyd. Back down in the corner, 
Back out, Manigot turns down the look to Corver Inside, Ashford right through his hands. Turnover, Creighton. Got to be ready for that pass. Yeah, that, that just hit Ashford right in his hands. You got to catch that ball. Turnover, Jays. Turnover, number six. 12-1 remaining. Jays up 61-50. Oregon thing. cutting into this lead. Sim to Strobridge. Back out Lloyd, shaking and bacon. Lloyd down inside, got Reynolds off his feet. Ball blocked by Echenique. Managa has got it, they're gonna try to trap him. They find Korver, back Managa. Gregory Echenique, the eraser. Left wing, Ashford looking Ooh. inside. Echenique, Ashford turns him down. Back Managa, left wing, Ashford. Echenique with a mismatch. Ashford jumper, air ball, no good. Knocked out of bounds, it'll go to Oregon. Timeout on the floor. 11.26 remaining second half. Jays up 61.50. It'll be Oregon basketball when we come back on AM 590. I'm T. Scott Moore, voice of the Jays for Fernando's Cafe and Cantina. You know, you travel with the Jays around the country, eat at some great restaurants. But I always enjoy coming home to the unique flavor you can only find at Fernando's Cafe and Cantina. It's the Sonoran-style Mexican food that I love. They're open seven days a week. They make everything fresh every day. Fernando's has a location close to you, open for lunch and dinner, catering services, banquet facilities, 114th Street south of Dodge, 75th and Pacific and Main Street in downtown Blair, Fernando's Cafe and Cantina, try it. You'll love it. Hey, Blue Jay fans, get in the game and get to Marcus Midtown Cinema. Marcus Midtown Cinema is your ticket to take dinner and a movie to a whole new level with Omaha's only Cinedyne in theater dining experience. Five digital screens with delicious, affordably priced food, freshly prepared, and served at your table while you enjoy the film. Afterwards, sit back and relax at Glow Lounge one level below. Get in the game and score a great night out at Marcus Midtown Cinema, 32nd and Farnham, Midtown Crossing. Get your tickets at MarcusTheaters.com. The Players Club at Deer Creek offers one of the most unique and challenging championship golf courses in the region. Designed by Arnold Palmer with generous bent grass fairways, winding waterways, and sculptured bunkers, the Players Club is a golfer's dream. And becoming a member has never been easier. For membership information and tee times, call 963-9950. 963-9950. The Players Club, just north of 120th and Military in Omaha. Blue Jay Basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there for all your insurance needs. Call Ron Niederhaus at 333-5104. And by Jerry Ryan Clothing and Sportswear, your Midtown headquarters for Blue Jay Apparel. And by the Crescent Moon Ale House at 36 in Farnham. They're offering free shuttle service to and from Quest Center Omaha for all Blue Jay home games. 11:26 remaining second half. Jays up 61-50. Oregon now leading the battle of the boards, 22-21. Both teams, seven turnovers. Creighton winning in the paint. 26 to 18 in points to the paint. Well, I think Coach Altman's maybe found something he likes in this dribble weave action. See if he comes back to it or he'll try and get Catron a touch on the interior. Armstead brings it up for the Ducks. Malcolm Armstead to Catron. Over to Strobridge to Sim. Right wing, Armstead. Jays in a man-to-man -man defense. Strobridge, pump fake, work spins inside, back out Singler. Singler driving on McDermott, down inside, kicks out Sim. Wing, three on the way is good. Garrett Sim with a three ball. We got an eight-point ball game. McDermott looks to get it in, finds Daryl Ashford. Ashford back McDermott. Doug will bring it up. Doug is trapped, denied. McDermott may have to call a timeout. They find Corver back McDermott and safely in the front court. Well, Coach Almond's committed to denying. And oh now boy. Antoine Young caught a hand in the face from J.R. Strobridge. I don't know if it was J.R. Strobridge or Doug McDermott. I see he got crushed, though. The Antoine yeah. Young is down face first. 61-53, Jays with a lead, 10-48, Doug. Doug caught him. Doug's shoulder got him. They were just trying to hand the ball off. And, and, and it, Antoine Young's down. And yes, he, got he is. popped. In the chin or where? Yeah, right, right. It was Doug McDermott's right shoulder hit Antoine Young right in the face as they were trying to hand the ball, as Doug McDermott had the ball, was trying to hand it off to Antoine Young and his right shoulder Popped Antoine right in the chin, and Antoine went down quickly and is now face down and has not moved. And turn Ben McNair trying to tend to him here. Get him up and turn him over, and well, he does. And this is really important because, uh, as I was just going to say before he got knocked over, is that Coach Allman is committed to making someone else other than Antoine Young bring the ball up the floor. And without Antoine Young on the floor, Creighton becomes a very average ball handling team 
And so this is of extreme importance for Antoine to, to shake it off here and be able to get back up and get back into this game so we can handle the ball. A lot of game left, and Oregon's a dangerous team, and they've crawled back into this thing as it now it's 61-53, 10-48 remaining in the second half. Oregon with their seventh three of the night here nearing the midway point of this second half and never want to see a player go down, but especially getting popped by your own guy. Yeah, that's that's not good. And just a real freak accident there. They just caught him right on the button, right on his chin. And sometimes that can be where you get KO'd. Young and tough cookie. This would be a nightmare for Creighton. Antoine Young, they're going to get him to his feet. And, and he looks a little woozy. 34 assists, one turnover in the CBI. Creighton's Iron Man. Antoine Young being tended to by both team trainer Ben McNair, team physician Doug Ramos. And it will be Oregon basketball. This is important. 10:48, 61:53. Mark it down. Let's Absolutely. see what they do without Antoine Young on the floor. Sim with the ball of the wing looks a singler right block, backing in on Doug McDermott. EJ Singler off the glass, no good. McDermott with the rebound, huge. Now Jai Hensman, and guys played well, but the spotlight is right on him right now. He needs to be solid with the ball and get Creighton in gear offensively. Managod, a Corver. And somebody else will have to step up because Managa has been scoring. And now McDermott misses, but Echenique puts it back. Back to a 10-point game, 63-53. Quickly up his Armstead to Lloyd. Make it Strobridge. Catron, left side of the paint, trying to back on Echenique. Swirls around. And a foul on Gregory Echenique. Close to being a hook with his left hand. Catron was working around Echenique. Probably the right call, though, as Echenique will pick up his third personal foul. Ken, Kenny Lawson will probably check in for him here. Absolutely. 63-53, midway point of the second half. 10-01 on the clock here. Catron's a load. He's a huge guy. Only listed at 245. I think most of that is above the waist. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of got a weird body. So it'll be Duck basketball. Both teams now with six team fouls. 10-01 remaining, second half. Both teams with four timeouts left. This is Creighton's game to hang on to. As Malcolm Armstead inbounds, Sim off the glass and good on the inbound play. Just beat Caleb Corver bad. Now here's the real, here's the moment of truth here. Handling the ball without Antoine Young on the floor. McDermott inbounds, Corver back over to Doug, finds uh, Managa. Managa working one-on-one -on -one with Strobridge up in the front court is triple teamed. Ball is thrown away. Managa turns it over intended for Josh Jones. First turnover. That's one. Here comes Armstead in the front court. Jays without their premier point guard, Antoine Young. Singler driving inside, kicks out Catron, puts the ball to the floor, back and a travel call. Thank you for the late whistle as Jovan Catron shuffled his feet and is called for the walk. But it was a really late whistle, but here we go again, handling the ball. McDermott inbounds Corver. Corver into front court. Caleb now pulls up on the wing, hands off Managa. Jay's in business here with 9.20 and counting, second half up 63-58. Corver on the wing, the senior. Working against Strobridge, has the ball stripped. Caleb turns it over. Strobridge lays it up and down. Yeah, that's two turnovers now. Up Managa, trapped at the timeline. Skip pass Jones into front court. They got a three on two. Out McDermott, baseline three. Off the rim, Catron rebound, one and done Jays. Here comes Armstead. Creighton up 63-57, Oregon on a run. Garrett Sims driving inside. Outside, Armstead, back outside, Singler. Top of the key, Strobridge, right wing, Sim. Wing, three on the way. Off the iron, no good. Rebound, Corver. Big board. Up to Josh Jones. Jones in the front court. Is trapped. Over to Caleb Corver. And what are they going to call? Foul on Armstead, I believe. Foul on uh, number 11. His third personal foul. Armstead is third personal. And Antoine Young back in the game for the Blue Jays. Yeah, he does here. He's got to play at a high level. 8.35, Oregon cranking it up on defense, turning up the pressure cooker. Well, in that, 
two-minute stretch there. Creighton got out, only got outscored four to two and turned it over twice. Now Jays have to hit their free throws. They've been good all night at 90%, 90, nine of 10. They're in the bonus. Josh Jones at the line. Game here in the balance, 63, 57, 835 left. Jones' free throw is nothing but nylon. Nice job by the sophomore, Josh Jones. Four points for Jones. Jones back to the line, the left-hander out of Omaha Central. Back to the free throw line. Second free throw on the way is no good. And that ball tipped around, out of bounds. It'll stay with the Jays. Kenny Lawson Jr. battling for that ball. Couldn't tell from our angle here because he was right in front of us. You know, couldn't see where Singler was, but that was maybe close to being over the back. But either way, it ends up being Creighton basketball. Managata inbound, deep inbound. Antoine Young picked up by Jonathan Lloyd between the circles. Antoine working a right-handed dribble, working it back now, finds Managa. He's guarded by Tiandre Williams. To Jones, jumper is good. Josh Jones with a little leg split from 18 feet. Gets it back, misses a free throw, and knocks down the deuce. So a three-point possession for the Jays. 66-57, Creighton. 66-57 with 8.05 and counting. Jonathan Lloyd driving inside, lays it up and down, made it look easy. My goodness. Small lineup right now for Oregon. I think Dana wants to spread them out and drive them. McDermott and Lawson still on the floor for the Jays, so they better make some hay down inside then as Jones nearly has the ball picked and finally gets it out of there to Lawson, to Managa, far side to Antoine Young. There's McDermott. He's double team, kicks out Young to Managa, top of the key inside. Lawson, Kitty shot, no good. Rebound back. Lawson inside for the flush. Wow. What strength by Lawson with the flush. Right in duck face. Lloyd down inside, kicks out. Sim, three on the way. Up the iron, no good. Rebound, Singler. Reach in foul, Antoine Young. Both teams now in the bonus, and Oregon will shoot the one-on-one -on -one when we come back. 7.20 remaining in this game. Creighton up, 68-59, and Oregon going to the free throw line when we come back on AM 590. Remember when food didn't come out of a box, a bag, a can, or a microwave? Remember when you could pronounce the ingredients? Then welcome to Lansky's. Enjoy Lansky's hearty pizzas and pastas, or chow down on a Philly or a tender roast beef sandwich. Lansky's, where real food and your taste buds can meet, all in a relaxed atmosphere. Lansky's in Omaha, Bellevue, and Council Bluffs. And don't forget Lansky's daily lunch specials. Welcome to Lansky's. Safe and effective. Now you get both guaranteed. Eight ball nutrition products are manufactured right here in Omaha and are guaranteed to be free of any banned substances as governed by the NCAA and World Anti-Doping Agency. Vitamins, proteins, amino acids, pre-workout boosters and more, eight ball nutrition offers student athlete, military, law enforcement and firefighter discounts. Products and discounts are available at 8ballnutrition.com or stop by 13724 Industrial Road. Eight ball nutrition, university tested, athlete approved. How do the Creighton Blue Jays maintain the best home court advantage in the Missouri Valley Conference? It all starts before tip-off. Every year, Market Media's Game Time videos help get the crowd at Quest Center Omaha on the edge of their seats. Why not do the same for your business? Market Media is a full-service film and video production company. Sound, lighting, green screen, high def, they do it all. See their living portfolio before tip-off at all Blue Jay basketball home games or check out their expanded reel on the web at mrktmedia.com. Market Media, marketing solutions at 60 frames per second. Blue Jay basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there for all your insurance needs. Call Don Tripp at 572-1118. It's time to take a look at our model's three-point total. Jay's current three-point total right now. Jay's is shooting 44% from downtown, 8 of 18 for 24 points. Jay's current three-point total is brought to you by our model's restaurant, Old World Flavor with New World Taste. 720 remaining in this ball game. Jay's up 68-59 and going to the line will be E.J. Singler shooting the one and one. He's an 87% free throw shooter, and he misses the free throw, and Echenique secures the board. And they're going with two big boys, Echenique and Lawson, at the same time. They're really going to try and pound it in, see Manigal if that can work. Gets it into front court to Jones, who hands it off Antoine Young. To Managa, between the circles. Down inside, the lob for Lawson underneath. Kenny works it Good back decision. outside. 
Looking inside, Echenique, one-on-one. Gregory shot up, is good, up and down, and that's working the big fellas yeah, right there. That's nice, Lawson post entry to Echenique, Echenique scores. Lloyd puts on the afterburns, out, Singler, three on the way, is good, E.J. Singler. And, and again, that's the problem on the other end is, you know, Creighton's, Oregon's gonna have some undersized forwards that can shoot the basketball. Echenique and Lawson gotta guard him, Singler makes him pay, buries the trip. Time out of the floor, we'll join him. 6.46 remaining in the game, Jay's up 70-62. It'll be Blue Jay basketball when we come back on AM 590. There's a square mile in the heartland where miracles happen every day. Come visit Boys Town, where children from across the country and families right here in our own community build bright new futures. Our world-famous village is Nebraska's only National Historic Landmark District. We're open year-round and admission is free. For more information, give us a call at 402-498-1140 or visit us online at boystown.org slash discover. Hey, Blue Jay fans, get in the game and get to Marcus Midtown Cinema. Marcus Midtown Cinema is your ticket to take dinner and a movie to a whole new level with Omaha's only Cinedyne in-theater dining experience. Five digital screens with delicious, affordably priced food, freshly prepared and served at your table while you enjoy the film. Afterwards, sit back and relax at Glow Lounge one level below. Get in the game and score a great night out at Marcus Midtown Cinema, 32nd and Farnham, Midtown Crossing. Get your tickets at MarcusTheaters.com. So you've been thinking about upgrading your sound system, but... Yeah, it's time to stop thinking and act. Kidwell can help you secure a sound system at a price that fits your budget. The economy has made it a buyer's paradise. Vendors are slashing their prices, and Kidwell can purchase and install a system that's right for your needs. You won't believe how good you sound and how much money you've saved. Your presentation will finally have the pizzazz your audience is craving. Call Kidwell today. The leaders in technology solutions. 6.46 remaining here at Quest Center Omaha, game one of the best of three championship series here in the CBI between the Creighton Blue Jays and Oregon Ducks. Creighton with a 70-62 lead. The chess match continues between Dana Altman and Greg McDermott. Dana Altman going small, Greg McDermott going big with both senior Kenny Lawson, sophomore Gregory Echenique, both at 6-9 on the floor at the same time with Greg McDermott's three guards, Antoine Young, Giants Managa, and Josh Jones. Here we go. Managa looking to get it in. Full court pressure. They shadow and deny Antoine Young. Now Managa up to Josh Jones. Jones into front court. Pulls up on the wing. Back out Managa. Left wing Antoine Young driving inside. Hand check J.R. Strobridge. My goodness. As they finally call him is Strobridge literally grabbing onto the arms of Antoine Young. And at the next level that's an and one but not at this level. NBA no continuation here is Antoine Young, nice drive. So Young will go to the line, though, to shoot the one and one regardless. Both teams in the bonus. He airballed his last free throw attempt. Yes, he did. Jay's 10 of 12 from the free throw line. Antoine Young on the evening, three of four from the line. The left-hander knocks it down, cool as can be. Beautiful. Jay's back up nine, 6.33 on the clock here. Second half, West Center Omaha. Young back to the line. Nothing but nylon. All right, here we go. Tyrone Nerid back in the ball game with four fouls. Get the ball over and into the hands of Catron. Back out, Armstead. One on one on Jahan's Managa. Trying to post him up off the glass. No good. Rebound, Lawson. And they're going to tie him up. It'll go to the Blue Jays. It will stay with the Blue Jays. Kenny Lawson Jr. strong with that basketball. To the Blue Jays. Good tie up by Armstead there. Now they're going to set their pressure. And how many times have you seen Dane Altman's teams erase 10 point leads and come back to win? They're very good in this situation. You've got to be extremely careful if you're Creighton because this pressing style can snowball for you. Managa looks to get it in. Gets it into Antoine Young, working one-on-one -on -one with J.R. Strobridge. Trying to trap him, they get it up into front court to Doug McDermott. McDermott working against the much smaller Armstead. Finds Managa, he'll work the ball between the circles now. Over to Josh Jones on the wing. Jones hands off Young. Under six minutes remaining, Jay's up 72-62. Antoine Young inside, bounce pass intended. Young got caught up in the feed and he's going back to the free throw line, Antoine splitting through the defense, fouled by Catron. Well, and Coach Altman must feel like it's it's ratcheted up. 
defensively time because he comes out of that matchup zone and goes man to man and really gets up and pressures. So gonna have to really be ready to handle the ball in the final five minutes and 54 seconds. Nered checks out. Singler and Sim check in. Yep. Three point shooters and Antoine Young short arms that free throw, barely draws iron. Here come the Ducks. Good offensive lineup for Oregon right now. Their best one. Armstead up and over to Strobridge to Catron, working one on one on Echenique, bumping him, backing him down right side, spins baseline, shot is rejected by Echenique. On the run is Managa. He is finding Jones, kicks out Antoine Young, dribble penetrates, back over Managa on the wing. Ah. Smart move to pull it out. But they had Echenique and they missed him. 21 on the shot clock. What a Jay's block. up 72 62. By Echenique there. Just waited on Catron to put that ball up. Antoine Young looking inside, finds Echenique, skip pass. Jones drives baseline on Catron. Floater is good. Shot, Jones, right around Jovan Catron. Here comes Armstead on the run for Oregon. Jay's up 74 62. Under five minutes remaining. And a foul down inside. He did. Echenique shoved Catron. Echenique picks up foul number four with 457 left in the game. Now Lawson coming back in. He's got three. Catron going to the line to shoot the one and one. Nine team fouls on Oregon, eight on the Jays. Possession arrow now favors Oregon. 457 remaining second half. Jays up 74 62. Jovan Catron at the line. Has. Missed the free throw, and Lawson had it and couldn't hold it. Free throw shooting is going to be really important, especially for Oregon, so they can set their press, and obviously for Creighton, so they can extend the lead. Kenny Lawson had that rebound. He just lost it out of bounds. They inbound quickly to Singler. Right side, Sim, who finds a cutting. Armstead stolen by Managa. Managa is going in, and he's fouled hard by Garrett Sim. And Managa will shoot two free throws. I love the freshman's attitude. Take it right at him. Well, and I thought he should have done that on the previous possession there. He had a fast break and uh, pushed it right to the last second pass it to Josh Jones. And there on that one, there was no question about it. He was going right to the rim in a very aggressive manner and drew the foul. Oregon got a little sloppy with the down screen and a little casual with the pass. And Managa just picks up the loose ball and pushes it. Managa with nine points and seven assists tonight at the line, shooting two. Off the iron, no good. Misses that free throw. 74-62, Creighton up. They are now 12 of 16 from the free throw line and even 75%. Jahans Managa back to the free throw line. Second free throw. On the way. Is no good. Rims out. Singler with a rebound. Up, Jonathan Lloyd in the front court. Jays up a dozen. A lot of time left. Lloyd to Strobridge. Back out Lloyd. Ball on the floor. Lloyd out Sim. Baseline. Three on the way. Another banal on Garrett Sim. Timeout Dana Altman. Sim on the night. Three for five from downtown. We'll keep it right here. 432 left in this one. 74-65. Jays up over Oregon here in the CBI. And it, and it wears on you now because Greg McDermott, the biggest things you have to draw up is another press breaker. And I'd imagine Coach Altman's going to go with a face guard. So he's going to get in front of all the Blue Jay offensive players and make them throw over the top. Then you have a center fielder behind so you don't have anybody on the ball. Maybe switch up the look there, but it's going to wear on you now because you're constantly having to break the pressure, constantly having to have three near outlets and a throw over. And that's something that's you've had to deal with now for the better part of 35 minutes. And you've seen Dana Altman's teams time and time again just hang around and hang around and hang around and then break through. And Creighton's got to start making their free throws, T. Scott. You can't exchange one for two and 0 for two from the free throw line for twos and threes on the other end. They're just going to go with a guy in the ball here, so some legit full court pressure. Creighton now 12 of 17 from the free throw line. And it'll be Doug McDermott to inbound. Nerud at 6'8 on him. They get it into Jones. Jones waiting on the double team. Back out Doug. Doug over to Antoine Young. Finds Jahans Managa. They got a two on one. Lob inside. Lawson lost it. Couldn't get it back. He's got it back. And he is fouled. Kenny Lawson Jr. If he would have been able to catch the ball, could have just gone right up and laid it off the glass. Instead, fumbled the ball. 
good news is at least he got fouled. He's going to line to shoot two. And the lob was just a slight, was a little high, but T. Scott, I like that. You can't start playing not to lose. You still got to continue to attack and pick and choose your spots. Don't get too aggressive, but there, that was an easy two-on-one. Kenny Lawson misses that free throw. So the Jays now have missed, what, four in a row? Antoine so. Young, Josh Jones, Jahans Managa. Managa. Yeah, they may have missed more than that all of a sudden. As Lawson knocks down one of two, 10-point game. Here comes Jonathan Lloyd for the Ducks. Left side in the front court, sets up with the wing, centers it up now. Lloyd calling for a clear out. Back down inside, back outside. Nerid on the near wing. Looking inside, Singler's got a mismatch. Jumper on the way, no iron. Menegau with a rebound. Lead pass, Josh Jones. Jones up in the front court, bounce pass. McDermott up, fouled by Jonathan Lloyd. Dangerous pass from Ooh. Josh Jones. <laughs> Doug McDermott luckily retrieved it and then went up and got fouled. Time out of the floor. 3.58 remaining in this game. Creighton up 75-65. And Doug McDermott going to the line when we come back on AM 590 Omaha's ESPN Radio. in an auto accident. You're confused and don't know where to turn to fix your vehicle the right way. The Rusty Eck way. Rusty Eck is more than just your favorite Ford store. Rusty Eck is Nebraska's only Ford certified collision shop. The only one in Nebraska. No rental car? No problem. Rusty Eck will give you something to drive while they fix your ride free. You heard right. Something free to drive while they handle all of your repairs. Rusty Eck certified technicians will thoroughly explain your estimate and then put your vehicle back together the right way. And you can feel good knowing that Rusty Eck uses eco-friendly products that are great for your car and safe for the environment. So no matter what make of vehicle you drive, if you need body work and you want it done the right way, the only way is the Rusty Eck way. Rusty Eck Auto Body just off I-80 and Sap Brothers exit. Auto Body done the right way, the only way, the Rusty Eck way. This season, more than 90 basketball games have been scheduled between teams from the 28 Jesuit colleges and universities across the United States. Each of these 28 Jesuit schools is dedicated to strong academics, teaching men and women to serve others and live a faith that does justice. For over 500 years, Jesuit Catholic higher education has been creating bright futures for its more than 200,000 students in the U.S. We thank all Blue Jay fans for their support of Creighton University and its Jesuit mission. 3.58 remaining here in Omaha, in regulation. Creighton up 75-65 over the Oregon Ducks here in the finals of the College Basketball Invitational. And Doug McDermott, simply words just cannot describe the young freshman. Now with 20 points on the night, along with four rebounds, 7 of 12 from the field. McDermott at the line to shoot two free throws. Misses the first free throw week off the front iron. Creighton has missed, I think, six out of their last seven or eight free throws, yeah, Nick. One for seven. Uh -oh. Crunch time. They were nine for ten at one point. McDermott's second free throw is good. Jay's up 11. Under four minutes. Here come the Beavers, or the Ducks. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Back outside Lloyd to Strobridge to Singler. Inside Catron. Shot up is good. Jovan Catron. Full court pressure. They find Lawson. Lawson finds Managa. Managa back over to McDermott up into front court. Doug working the basketball, gets it up and gives it up to Jahans Managa with Sim on him. I got Garrett let Sim touch it. Try to. Garrett Sim. Managa driving on him. Back outside is Managa with 15 on the shot clock. Out near the timeline, Garrett Sim on him. Managa with 10 on the shot clock. Works to the wing. Ball nearly stolen. Managai's got to get his head up and look for a teammate. Over to Lawson, who puts the ball on the floor. Shot off the glass. No good. And rebounded by Catron. Three minutes now. Jay's up 76-67. It's a nine-point game. Lloyd drives inside on Antoine Young. Leaning into Antoine Young, and they're going to call Young for the foul. Boy, he really, with that right hand, he drew, drove to his left with that right hand. He really pushed and bent Antoine off and went up and through the contact score. Could have gone either way, but a close call. Either way, three-point play for Lloyd. And the biggest thing is that entire previous offensive possession, Lloyd did an outstanding job denying Antoine Young the ball. And the freshman Managa had to make a play. And he was flustered, and Lawson had to force up an uncharacteristic 
dribble drive shot. So big free throw here for Lloyd so they can set their pressure. Lloyd goes to the line, knocks it down. Here comes the duck pressure. McDermott looks to get it in, finds Jones. Jones trying to beat the pressure. Ball knocked away, but into the hands of Jones, they dodge a bullet. Jones up to Managa. Back out, Jones. Antoine's got to go get this ball. Throw it to him. There it is. Finally, they get the ball to Antoine Young. Jonathan Lloyd on him. Out near the timeline, Antoine Young driving on Lloyd. Kicks yep. out. Charge. Offensive foul taken by Catron. Charge on Antoine Young. That entire play was made by Lloyd for the past two possessions, frustrating Antoine. And once Antoine finally got the ball, Antoine was so determined to go make a play that he just stuck his head down and drove the ball right down the right side of the floor. And Catron was there set for a charge. And now it's a six-point game, 2.40 to play. Here comes Oregon, and this crowd stands on their feet trying to cheer the Jays on because this is a big defensive possession for Creighton. Antoine Young, Josh Jones, Doug McDermott, Gregory Echenique, and Jahins Managa. Greg McDermott telling his big man Echenique to stay down. Do not bite on the pump fake. So Singler to inbound. Jonathan Lloyd lets it roll all the way to front court. And here come the Ducks playing with a lot of confidence. They have cut into a 17-point lead here in the second half. It's a six-point game. Catron jumper on the way is another but nylon. Jovan Catron, timeout, Dana Oldman. Good set there from Coach Altman. A little single screen there as Catron was going to go scream for Sim. And Sim then acted like he was going to come off it and screened at Chinique. 76 72. Popped and Cray knocked down the jumper. Up four. How many times have Blue Jay fans seen Dana Altman coach teams fall away like this? Right now, Oregon seems feels like the team playing with more confidence. Well, Creighton right now, because due to some missed free throws, they've gotten a little bit rattled, and the, and the demons of doubt, I think, have creeped into their head. And again, this full-court pressure is cumulative, and it, and it begins to wear on you, and it's just a nuisance. It's something that they've really done a nice job of is making somebody else other than Antoine Young handle the ball. And... Creighton struggle a little bit with that because then offensively, they're out of sync and can't get into a good offensive set and get a high percentage shot. It's going to be really important for Antoine Young to get the ball, calm everybody down, and execute. Doug McDermott will do the inbounding against full court pressure by the Ducks. McDermott looks to get it in. He finds Echenique. Echenique still with the ball, must find someone, and finds Antoine Young. Jonathan Lloyd on him. Young back over to Echenique. Gregory into front court. Pulls that ball back up and looking for help. Hands off Managa near the timeline. Managa working against Strobridge. Kicks it over go. to Young. Now you got to calm down. 15 seconds of the shot clock. They give it high wing right side to Jones. Jones top of the key. McDermott lob inside at Janike. He is fouled. Gregory at Janike will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Jays the double bonus. That is the 10th team Oregon. foul on Oregon. Again, Creighton now has got to make their free throws as Jonathan Lloyd fouls out of this basketball game. And, and that's big because Lloyd's done a nice job of denying Antoine Young the ball, but much better job by Creighton once they broke the pressure. There was a laboring moment when Echenique was about at the three or four count, got it to Giants Managa, but they ultimately got it to Antoine Young, and they were able to settle in, get into that high-low set. McDermott, nice touch pass to Echenique, and Echenique draws the... Foul, and now Echenique is going to go to the line, and this is where you got to knock down your throws. Creighton made their free throw uh, free throws early in the game at crunch time when they've needed them. They've missed more than they've made. Gregory Echenique stepping to the line. He's got 14 points and seven rebounds here on the night. These shots, none bigger than tonight. Echenique is two for two from the line tonight. The big sophomore, first free throw on the way. Another big dial on. Five-point game now. Two-possession lead for Creighton. 2.05 here on the clock in regulation. Echenique's second free throw is no good. Singler rebounds. See if they come back with that same look with Catron and Sim. Armstead in the front court sets up high wing left side. Crowd on their feet. Down inside Singler. Shot up. Catron, jumper on the way, rims out, no good, and the rebound is taken down by Echenique. Gregory, a couple of dribbles, needs some call help. Timeout. They may have to call a timeout. He gets it up to Antoine Young, and a nice shove by Armstead, who acts surprised, and it ain't rugby. 
138 remaining. Jay's up 77-72. Antoine Young going back to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. Dodged the bullet a little bit there because Ziegler had a point blank layup, missed it. Big boy rebound by Echenique. And Echenique has been very strong with the ball when he's had a dead ball situation and there's been people pressuring him. Really wipes that defense off and Antoine Young now at the line. Got to knock down your free throws again. Shooting two, Young's free throw is another but nylon. Now a six point lead. A made free throw here by Antoine Young would make this a three possession game with 138 left in regulation. Young's second free throw is nothing but nylon. Here we go, 97 seconds. Here comes Armstead, up in the front court, over to Catron, their money man. Jumper, Strobridge, three on the way, another but nylon. J.R. Strobridge, timeout, Dana Allman. And I believe that's their final timeout. 90 seconds left, J.R. Strobridge, just like that, knocks down the three ball. Creighton blinked, and Oregon knocks down the three, 79-75. Again, Oregon now being able to set up the full court pressure. Creighton gonna have to battle it one more time. Well, and Coach Altman has been early with his timeouts. I think he felt like he really needed to set his pressure and remind his guys what he wants in the full court and then offensively as well. Great play by Catron with the extra pass. Strobridge into double figures with 11 now, knocks down the triple. Four point game, minute 30 left. Uh, uh, again, same state rules apply. Gotta get the ball in and then you gotta be stay calm. Plenty of timeouts, four timeouts left for the Creighton Blue Jays. And then once you get the ball in the half or across half court, get the ball to Antoine Young, and then you got to take that collective deep breath and understand you got 35 seconds here to execute a nice offensive possession. Likely going to go inside or have a high pick and, pick and roll situation with Antoine Young and possibly Doug McDermott or Gregory Echenique and let Juan go to the rack or post up the big boy. Well played game. This has been a fun game. Yeah. 79-75, Jays with the lead. They're in the driver's seat. Just gotta be strong with hey, the ball. You handle the ball, you make your free throws, you're, you, you, you win the game. Doug McDermott will inbound for Creighton. His receivers will be Antoine Young, Giants Managa, Josh Jones, or Gregory Echenique. Singler will be on the ball, facing the ball. McDermott can run the baseline. Trying to free up somebody. And yep. they finally, they call a timeout. Good timeout taken as Doug McDermott just could not find anyone to throw that ball to. M much better job by Oregon there, face guarding everybody, and then they just switched all those screens. I would imagine now Greg McDermott will back his guys up to half court and maybe get a running start into things. And instead of having screens where they'll just switch it, you get a running start at the inbounder, and then you're cut in different directions to try and just create some space to catch rather than have the space be created by a screen I think Greg McDermott will draw up something like that. And obviously, Dana Altman, this, in his, this is not his first rodeo. He's seen about every press breaker in the book, and he'll be reminding his guys what the situation is. Again, three timeouts now. The same rules apply. Get to that four seconds, you call a timeout. 90 seconds left here in regulation. Creighton up 79-75. Led by as many as 17. Oregon led early in this game, and Creighton has led ever since. Doug McDermott gets the ball from the official. Right of the baseline. Looks to get it in. Finds Jahan's Managa. He is trapped immediately. Up and over oh to boy. Antoine Young on the force on the far side. They got a break on. Antoine Young over Jones. Baseline three on the way. Nothing but nylon. Oh my. That was a dagger. 82-75. Josh Jones. Is that the play you called? No, Down inside. So. Armstead. Kicks it out. Strobridge. He just made a three. Strobridge inside, but a foul away from the ball. Oh, going to be Josh called Dolby. on Josh Jones, who just knocked down a three. Now he's going to send Catron to the free throw line for two free throws with 108 left in regulation in the second half. Uh, I cannot believe Josh Jones took that shot. But, uh, you know, he's got no conscience, and it's what you do to try and make a play to win games here. And Josh Jones knocks it down. I'm not sure what the situation is right now. So everybody's going to their benches, and it looks like the officials are going to get together and review something. Whether or not Jones went uh, an elbow or anything was involved because Catron is holding his head. And they're gonna take a look and see if it was one of those new flagrant fouls. If there was a blow above the above the shoulders to Catron. This is a huge call. One oh eight remaining in the second half. Jay's up 82 to 75. So maybe they're reviewing if Josh Jones' shot was a three. Oh, okay. It's like that. that's what they're looking at. Okay. 
And obviously they. It looks like it was. Stopping play here. Very important though because makes it a three possession game. 82-75. Maybe they're looking at the elbow as well. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. <laughs> All I know is at crunch time, you hate to see the officials stop the game when everybody's ready to go, and now they're taking their sweet time here at the monitors. And now they are coming over, and what? Now they're going to take more time. Well, Josh Jones got switched on to J Katron, and there was a lot of contact underneath the basket. There's a chance they're checking that to see what the situation is. There was maybe something flagrant or some uh, some ill will down there. I'm not sure what they're looking at, but that could be a possibility. Jovan Catron, and it looks like the angle that I'm looking at, I got an AG net camera here. They're trying to find different angles because I don't think they can find the foul right now, but here they might have an angle at it. Well, play rolling along rather nicely here in this one, 108 left, 82-75. And all of a sudden, the officials have stopped play now for a good two to three minutes at least. As, I mean, you want them to get it right, but man, oh man, this is tough. Now Greg McDermott going over to talk to the officials. And now they're going to bring Dana Altman over as well. And now they're going to bring them both to midcourt. Make some noise. Not really sure what's going on. They'll talk it over. And they're going to have Catron shoot two free throws, basically. So Jay's up 82-75. 108 left in the game. Jovan Catron going to the line. Catron with 14 points on the night. He is two for three from the free throw line, finally. Then Josh Jones walks past Catron and kind of they slap each other and say, hey, no hard feelings. So the officials got it right. Catron bends his knees. Free throw on the way. Is no good. 82-75, Creighton, 108 remaining here in Omaha. Game one of a best of three championship series. Jovan Catron back to the line. Second ball out of the way is good. Get it in quick if you can. Jones gets the ball. Shattered by Strobridge to McDermott. Singler's got him. Doug's got to find a nice. leading. Antoine Young in the front court. Young now. Going down inside, drives baseline. Out, Managa. Top of the key, Jones. Back to Managa, back to Young. 53 seconds left in the game. 17 on the shot clock. Young working on Sim. Out near the timeline, they trap him. Top of the key, deflected. Ball, Sim going down, Strobridge. Back out, Sim. Driving inside, Singler blocked by McDermott from behind. What a block. Oh my goodness, that might have been the game saver. Young, high wing foul. left side, Managa, back out Young, 28 seconds left, Antoine Young to McDermott, a foul. no foul, game 82-76, skip past Managa, Managa is fouled by Strobridge, 20 seconds left in this game, what a play by Doug McDermott, literally that may have saved the day for Creighton. Yeah, Singler was going in for a wide open layup. And Doug McDermott, working hard, trailing the play, pens it against the glass. Unbelievable hustle, unbelievable block by Doug McDermott. Great job. Now Jahens Managa at the free throw line. Six Managa point game. at the line. One made free throw would make it a three possession lead. Managa knocks Big. it down. That is huge. The senior, number 23, Wayne. Doug McDermott checks out. Wayne Reynolds checks back in with 20 seconds left. 83-76, Creighton. Doug McDermott has tied his career high for block shots with one. <laughs> As Managot makes a second. 84-76, Strobridge, three on the way, off the iron, no good. Take it around and knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with Oregon. Off of Jones, 12 seconds left. Inside, Catron. Off the glass, no good. Echenique rebound. Look at Gregory Echenique. A man among boys taking that ball and chinning it. And ladies and gentlemen, Creighton has done it. They win game one of the best of three series here in the CBI. And just for your information, 
This tournament is four years old. In the first three years, whoever won game one won the whole enchilada, Nick Bob. Very important in a series. I don't care if you're playing best of three, best of five, best of seven, win that first one, put yourself in the driver's seat, sets the tone. Now, the fun part of the series begins, though. The adjustments on both sides, but certainly a very emotional night. Dana Altman's return. I thought everything was fantastic. I thought Dana was well-received, and I thought it was a well-played game, both by Oregon and Creighton, and Creighton wins 84-76. We're gonna take a break. U.S. Bank postgame show coming up next. Creighton, by the way, improves to 23 and 14 on the season. U.S. Bank postgame show coming up after this on AM 590. Safe and effective. Now you get both guaranteed. Eight ball nutrition products are manufactured right here in Omaha and are guaranteed to be free of any banned substances as governed by the NCAA and World Anti-Doping Agency. Vitamins, proteins, amino acids, pre-workout boosters, and more, eight ball nutrition offers student athlete, military, law enforcement, and firefighter discounts. Products and discounts are available at 8ballnutrition.com or stop by 13724 Industrial Road. 8-Ball Nutrition, university tested, athlete approved. Whether you want to cheer your team on, chow down, or chill, Barley's at 1510 Cumming is the answer. Just minutes from the Quest Center in the old tip-top building, Barley's is the perfect location for your pre- or post-game get-together. And with three party rooms available, you can invite plenty of friends. Going to a Jays game or concert at the Quest, Barley's offers a free shuttle. So let's review. You want to cheer your team on. Barley's has TVs everywhere. You want to chow down. Barley's has a full menu. You want to chill. Barley's is a casual neighborhood bar. So give it a try. Barley's, 1510 coming in the Tip Top Building. Service in the Marriott tradition. That's what you'll find at the Omaha Downtown Courtyard by Marriott. This fully restored historic building offers its guests 181 spacious rooms, suites, and spas. An indoor pool, whirlpool, and exercise room with a breakfast buffet available daily. Call today and ask about the special Creighton weekend rate based on availability. The Omaha Downtown Courtyard by Marriott, 101 South 10th. Call 346-2200 today. At American National and People's National Bank, the financial well-being of families and businesses has been our top priority for more than a century. And with a tradition of conservative and financially responsible decisions, we remain stable, safe, sound, and well-capitalized. That means you can spend more time focusing on what's important to you and less time worrying about your money. So relax. Our strength and stability means your money is safe and secure. Visit us at one of our 29 locations or go online at anbank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Mike and Mike, 5 to 9 weekday mornings, now on AM 590 KXSP, Omaha's new home, Omaha's new home for ESPN Radio. U.S. Bank postgame show here from Quest Center, Omaha, where Creighton takes game one of the best of three championship series here in the CBI over Dana Altman's Oregon Ducks, 84 to 76. Game two will be from Eugene, Oregon, 9 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Pacific on Wednesday night. Game three, if necessary, will also be... Pressing T. Scott down inside, ball tipped away from. Janike battling down inside, skips the ball over to Managa. Three on the way. Jahans, Managa for three. For their defense. Again, the matchup zone can.
Death, Managa finds Antoine Young at the free throw line. Left wing, Corver. He's going to try a three. Caleb Corver. Four three. Four threes now for the J. CBI knocked that one down. Antoine Young. Jay's up 16 13. There's another three. Managa. Jahans Managa. Four three. Managa. Long skip pass Jones looking for instant offense. Josh Jones. Josh Jones for three. And they are playing so confident right now. T Basketball to Antoine Young. So Managa is going to try to work it up himself against Sim. And Sim loses his footing as Managa comes up. Out court. Singler, Singler inside on the move. Singler blocked by Ejinike. Kept the ball alive. Up Ashford. Ashford, right wing Young. Three on the way. Air ball. Antoine Young, ball in hand. Lob inside. McDermott puts that ball up. No good. Daryl Ashford. What a play. Great play by Ashford. Ike kicks back out, Managa out, Korver, wide open for the three, Caleb, Bishop. Caleb, Korver, 4-3. Shoot the basketball, that's what. Up at three on the way. Nothing Doug McDermott, 4-3. To the middle of the zone by Managa and immediately looks opposite. McDermott buries a triple, 14 for Doug. The key, Catron. He's their money man. Jovan Catron inside. Ball tipped by Managa. Sims. Managa's got it. Can he save it? Finds McDermott running the floor. Off the glass. No good. But a foul on DeAndre Williams. What a play by John Hens. Goaltending. Count the basket wow. by Doug McDermott. Managa got the ball loose and out hustled. And Bacon, Lloyd down inside, got Runnels off his feet. Ball blocked by a Janike. Managa's got it, they're gonna try to trap. Back now, finds Managa, he's guarded by DeAndre Williams. To Jones, jumper. Josh Jones! Jones with a little leg split from 18 feet. Managa, top of the key, inside Lawson. Kenny, shot, no good. Rebound back, Lawson inside. Kenny Lawson, wow. Jr. Lawson with the flush. Janike bumping him, backing him down right side. Spins baseline, shot is rejected by Janike. On the run is Managa. He is finding Jones, kicks out it. Young on the force on the far side, they got a break on. Antoine Young over Jones. Baseline three on the way. The Josh ball. Jones for three. Josh Jones. Bridge. Back out Sim. Driving inside. Singler blocked by McDermott from behind. What a oh my goodness. That might have been the game saver.